Hi, everyone. Uh, how y'all doing? Uh, hey, Ian, how's it going? Hey, it's going well. Uh, it's awesome. Yeah, I'm doing I'm doing all right. I'm hanging in there. It's very cold today in New York. It's supposed to be a low of 30 degrees and a high of like 50. So mm -hmm. I, I think I'm going to be avoiding the outside for most of today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been uh, for months. Yeah. <laughs> well, staying away from the parks at the very least. I know you're in Austin. How's how's the weather for you? It just got a little cold, but it's still sunny. Yeah. So I'm still happy about it. And they're still serving breakfast tacos? And there's still tacos every day, yeah. That's that's so, good. You know, I living the life over here. That's that's the real point where you know society has collapsed if the breakfast tacos go away. <laughs> So uh, for everyone watching, we're really excited that you're joining us. Uh, I'm Shai. I'm part of the DevRel team here at Contentful, and Ian is, is right underneath me. Uh, we're going to be making a cool developer portal. But before we get started, I've got a couple things I want to plug. Um, so first off, um, we are doing another community meetup. So we did a Contentful community hangout. Uh, last month in November. We're going to be doing that again in December on the 16th. Uh, we already have some awesome speakers lined up. I'm really excited about it. And we'll be sharing some more details um, as we get closer to the event. Uh, we're going to be doing two of them. So there'll be one for uh, folks in the EU time zone and one for folks in uh, North America. So instead of doing a West and an East, we're just going to do one North America event uh, as well on the 16th. So keep an eye out for that. We've also got a bunch of links to plug as always. Uh, anything that, that our DevRel team does is uh, is following our code of conduct. So if there are any issues or any incidents or if anything we do makes you feel uncomfortable, please do head over to that link. And there are reporting policies in there so you can, you can reach out and we'll make sure to correct it. We also have our developer portal. If you're looking to learn about Contentful, if you're looking for resources or anything like that, contentful.com slash developers. It's also a great place uh, for you to click on a link that will take you to our Slack. Uh, or you can go there directly, contemptful.com slash Slack, and you can join our kind of developer community. We're all about answering questions and being supportive and being helpful there. So if you need anything uh, or you need any help, please do reach out to us via that Slack. If you're looking to learn GraphQL, we have a really awesome Contentful and GraphQL course that you can check out. And if you do build something using our GraphQL API, we want to hook you up with some swag. So uh, that's contentful.io slash GraphQL swag. So let me go ahead and punt this over to Ian's screen. Ian, you ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So we were talking before before the stream started. Ah, no, yeah. Yeah. We were talking a little bit before the, the stream started about building a developer portal. And I know we were talking about Google Code Labs. But I, I, before we kind of dive into it, maybe we could talk about like why this kind of stuff is important to you and, and how developer experience work kind of became a thing that you were passionate about. Yeah. Um, so you've got your plugs. <laughs> I can do some of mine. Yeah, that was definitely a segue for you to plug your stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my name's Ian Jennings. I'm going to go back to uh, just my screen for a second. Yeah. Can you? Oh, you have to do that, actually. Do you want me to turn it off? Yeah, just let me. Let me yeah, I could just do uh, do my face for a minute, and then I'll there go back go. to my screen. Um, yeah, so my name's Ian Jennings, and I have been doing um, Shai's job for longer than he's been doing it. So no, I'm playing, I think it's because you're older than me. I, I don't that's think that's like a, a function of like uh, of like um, career so trajectory, just, been... just age. <laughs> Shai's so so better at me. He's exceeded me in all. In all I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So I, I've been coding in like alone in my room since I was 13. Mm -hmm. And I just became super passionate about it. And when I went to college, of course, hackathons happened and I got involved in hackathons. And there we found, you know, here's a bunch of students or, you know, just regular people going out and coding for fun. And then I was like, Oh, but there are these brands here. What are they doing? Right? Like, you know, Shy is a developer evangelist. And it's like, what are these people doing at these mm -hmm. events? And it turns out what they're doing is they're essentially doing user research, right? Mm -hmm. They're doing market research. They're trying to find out what do developers like about the APIs? What are they, uh, where do they get stuck? Is it easy to use? What are they building? Stuff like that. And, and as that area grew, as that, um, you know, field grew, as more developer evangelists and hackathons grew, um, we started seeing people take that really seriously. And now people are, you know, this word developer experience has popped up uh, to compare to user experience saying like, this is a thing. Like we need to be taking this seriously, making sure that it's fun to be a developer. It's easy to get started. Developers have everything they want. Mm -hmm. And the reason that that's become a thing is because it's every time a developer get started and they get stuck and they they stop they're going to go to the competitor right and yeah. that, that customer is going to now be the competitors um 
So developer experience is about finding those places where a developer would get frustrated and eliminating them. Yeah. Um, I say it's new. It's not really new. It's actually 20 or 30 years old. Apple kind of invented it with evangelism. They also invented uh, developer experience, I think. And so like, there are some companies that have been taking it seriously. But I, I think what, what I'm doing with Hacksaw is essentially democratizing it and saying, like, we all need to take this seriously. If we're all going to be, you know, if we're going to have 20,000 APIs out there and we're all going to be pushing, you know, pushing these dev portals, like, we all got to make sure they're accessible to everybody, mm -hmm. right? We can't just be launching these things and saying, oh, it's your fault if you don't figure it out. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that's the that's the that's the short story. <laughs> it definitely feels feels familiar to like the ethos of of what we're doing. You know, trying to make mm -hmm. sure that we're listening to our community and that we're we're like giving the folks that are that are doing cool stuff a platform so they can share what they're learning and more importantly, like finding where people are failing and what struggles they're having so we can we can go fix them. And these streams have been really nice because like we have people commenting in real time, being like, "Hey, I don't understand this thing. I don't know what this yeah. is," and we can we yeah. can help them and document it and then ideally go fix it and make it more of a long term kind of improvement rather than just a like a <laughs> hidden in a YouTube video somewhere. And so so it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, your intro even to this into into this stream had that sort of engagement, like, hey, let us know in the Slack, let us do it here, let's because yeah. you're looking to improve that as well, and I think everybody is yeah. right. Yeah, I, so every uh, and, and, and that kind of leads into what we're building today. Yeah. Um, you can share my screen now. All right, <laughs> there um, we go. <laughs> yeah, so every every company to you know is working on their developer experience, and they're all building. Or, or purchasing this same kind of page. Yeah. Can you bump uh, the font up a little bit? Sorry? Can you bump the font just a little bit? Oh, yeah, yeah, OK. There we go. Yeah. So they're all building developer portals, yeah. right? So if we go um, to like Contentful and we developer. look at, yeah. um, where is it under resources? You can, uh, or you can just go to contentful.com slash developer or contentful.dev as well. Mm, OK, OK, yeah. I think we're here. Yeah. Um, you know, you have a similar page, right? And here's mm -hmm. all, all of our tutorials. And I'm sure this is already built on Contentful. Um, but essentially, every company is reinventing this. And I yeah. thought today it would be nice to show how we can do it in an hour uh, yeah. with Contentful and, you know, make it easy for other companies to sort of make yeah. their own portal. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Um, um, cool. So should we just start? I got VS Code, an empty project. Yeah. Um, well, why don't we why don't we kind of figure out what we're going to like, what the structure and like what the important features we're looking for are. Yeah, and then we can yeah. set up the content model to get it going. So I think this is a pretty good yeah. start. Code, Google Code Labs. Um, the reason I'm, I'm comparing to Google Code Labs is because they essentially have uh, a million tutorials. Um, <laughs> well, it's also that it's um, it's just sort of a big like bucket of everything yeah and i kind of like that yeah I, I wouldn't recommend it but i kind of like that it's like okay this is a simple model it's not yeah. like a hierarchy it's kind of just like hey yeah a bunch of tutorials i was gonna say i don't like yeah. the, i like the like the buttons and the animation and how it feels but like i don't like the structure <laughs> hopefully we don't have any googlers that watch us and, and are going to be offended but <laughs> I, I find poking around the Google developer documentation to be a little rough at times. <laughs> I think it's simple enough for us to do as a demo. Yeah. It's kind of where so, I'm getting. It's like, yeah, we, we can be feature to feature to, to this giant company. Yeah. If we do. <laughs> so. Okay. So we've got so we've got a list of tutorials and we yeah, can filter so those tutorials, tutorials by categories. So. There's they're filtered by categories, which are kind of just like tags, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And then they have an event which uh, I would probably do something like language or something. I don't, yeah, it's we can do language. Here. Language would be kind of similar to categories in that it would be a tag as well. And then, and then the interesting or the harder part is we yeah. have a, you know, we have our tutorial, but the tutorial is mm -hmm. multiple pages. Yeah. And as we navigate, we're, we we kind of want to like save our progress yeah. or, or have this concept of progress, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think the steps are going to be particularly difficult here, like the animation mm -hmm. kind of thing. The the progress saving might be something we'll have to probably instantiate something that can hold on to data, but we can definitely we can definitely get something something similar going. In yeah, terms I'm of very like, curious to see if we could maybe have like, oh, you're halfway in between these tutorials right yeah. now, or like just I, I want to know where we can go from here, it, like if we get here quickly. Yeah, cool. Um, Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, uh, let's go. I was going to mention too that the markdown and code samples and stuff like that is also 
Oh yeah. We um, could definitely do that too. Yeah. 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 I know. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> um, I got you covered. That's <laughs> nice. Let's get into it. Okay. So how should I start off here? Yeah. So let's start off by kind of establishing a content model. So Ian, uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but like you're you're pretty new to Contentful. You're you're a prolific JavaScript guy, but Contentful is kind of like this is one of your first or second times like poking around in it. Yeah, this is definitely. Um, I think I played around a bit for for five minutes or so. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's totally fine. I think that'll be yeah. a lot of fun. It'll it'll be like a nice. Uh, this is yeah, a good yeah. Example well, I'm actually going to be judging the developer experience the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> I should expect a blog post about about our onboarding in a, yeah. in a couple of days. Yep. <laughs> cool. So, um, so why don't we go ahead and create a new project? So, if you click on the little drop down to the left where it says Gatsby Starter for Contentful, and then it has that mm -hmm. hamburger menu, we can create a new space. Um, and we're going to go ahead and just use the free one, the community. Oh, you only have one per. We're going to say, okay, okay let's just reuse the one that we already made then, <laughs> that we made beforehand. <laughs> and we can head into the settings and we can, we can rename it. Um, so settings, general settings, and then we can rename the space to. Oh, I have some domain names ready. I think it's like build lab or something like build that. Build lab. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we can deploy it during this stream. Yeah, that'd be fun. Hit rename. Cool. And I think we're good to go and we can just go ahead and jump into the content model. All righty. Uh, and OK, so well, uh, let's yeah. let's go ahead and just delete those two things that we made yeah. yesterday off camera because no one wants to no one wants to. We got to actually explain what we're doing. We can't just have it pre done. That's cheating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and we are looking at the comments as well. If anyone has comments, um, you know, let us know. I see Titus in the comments saying, hey, so <laughs> anyone else has any comments or any questions, do jump in. So oh, I have to delete uh, all the entries first. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Um, yeah. Delete all entries. Yeah, it's okay. We can just we can just modify it and just keep going okay. from here. Okay. okay. Um, so okay. Um, oh, I could do this, right? Yeah. You can, and then you got to save it and. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't Oop. save it. Oh. Oh well. It's all right. We can just keep going from here. Yeah, yeah. So we've sure. got we've got this tutorial type that we made, and so right now this is just an empty an empty model, and we have an empty steps model. So I figure we could talk about steps. If you go back to Code Lab really quickly, you see mm -hmm. that they've got that like little clickability thing, um, where you can like click through the steps on the side. Um, so in in Contentful, um, we're all about modeling content, and so the the way I'm kind of thinking about the model here is that like each of these steps is like an individual piece of content. Like a step is a type of content. And then a tutorial is like a set of steps, if that kind of makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. um, and so I figure probably the the simplest way to do this is that I would make a, a content model for steps. And so that would be that would have like a title. Maybe that would have a time of like how long it'll take to complete the step. Um, and then like a, a text field. Uh, and then the tutorial model would probably be a list, like a reference to a list of steps, uh, probably the categories and the language, and then a title, maybe a date. If we want to go ahead and set okay. that up that way, maybe we could start with the step model and we could start building that stuff out. Sure, let's do it. OK, so we got the step here. Yeah, and we've um, already got that it's got some text in there. We already set up the rich text field yesterday. Yeah. So a step is essentially this everything that's in this white box here. It represents this the page that we're on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Great. So and so the properties we determined are sort of like I think order might be one. Yeah. Well, we'll be doing the order in the tutorial layer. Okay. And okay, we'll be able to. Yeah. Okay. So because normally I would think in a database that you would do the order in the in the kind of yeah. the child, right? Yeah, but this isn't a database. It's a it's a content management system. Okay. That's a little uh, different. <laughs> okay, very cool. I'm I'm excited to talk about that and learn and learn more about that. Yeah, um, yeah, and it's it's nice because we're so we we've got kind of like a twofold thing that we're trying to we're trying to engineer here, right? Like we're setting up the content model so that we as developers can consume the content down the line and you know eat it from JavaScript or whatever and poop yeah. out the poop out the page. Uh, technical term there, poop out the right. page, uh, <laughs> and but we also want to make it so it's it's accessible for the non technical folks that aren't coders, so they can they can look at this and they can click on things and they can, it makes mm -hmm. sense, right? Mm -hmm. It's not it's not confusing and it's not complicated and it feels it feels familiar as well. 
Um, and I see you're clicking through some stuff. We're, you're getting into the <laughs> you're getting into the exciting stuff. So like the sidebar, you can see. Yeah, the, like, yeah, I'm really excited and, about the sidebar. Yeah. Um, um, okay, okay. Before we get there, though, we got we got to do you know we got to define our schema. Always so yeah. you know. Not my favorite part of the project, but also very. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say I like this part. This is my favorite part. <laughs> so, this is when everything is still like potential, and it hasn't it hasn't crashed to earth with the yeah, realities of the things that you're writing. I need to change the schema now because it's been. Yeah, uh, looks like we've got some more people in the comments. I, I see Salma has joined us, and I see we've got we've got Stefan as well. So hey, everyone. Um, so yeah, let's let's build out that step model and let's put in some some more stuff. So we've we've okay. already got the the text, so the source. Um, why don't we go ahead and add a title as well? So text would be good and like a short text. Um, and if we go ahead and click create and configure, we can set it so this is the entry title of the. Um, yeah. Oh no, uh, there's a there's a checkbox. Oh, yeah. it was, okay. it was fine. What does that yeah. mean? So that's when we go to the content uh, page, whenever we've got, um, you've got the list of all the content, the title is going to be the thing that uh, gets displayed. So we'll oh, see it, we'll see yeah. it as like yeah. the, the entry title. Yeah. Um, have you well. used like Airtable and, and Coda and things like that? I have not used Airtable in a long time. Uh, I think they, the last time I used Airtable was in like 2016 or 2017. Yeah, they have a concept of called display column. Yeah. So this and, is kind of like the display column. It's interesting because all these databases have, you know, like a usually primary key, right? Mm -hmm. And it, we're kind of moving toward. It's kind yeah. of funny because it's not, yeah. it's not the primary key. It's like a, it's a display key. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so this key. this yeah. isn't the thing that you. So you're you're bringing up a good point with the with the primary key. That would be a thing that you know is unique and that you could do a lookup on. Yeah. We do have that, um, but we call those IDs. Okay. So like a content ID. So if you hit mm -hmm. save, um, and we can actually go take a really quick look at that. Um, you can go ahead and save the model and you can actually reorder the model too if you want to put the title on top. Okay, cool. Um, and then, hit and then I'm guessing again. we look at the preview. Yeah, so that's going to be what the, the object looks like in JSON, but go ahead and hit save and let's go ahead and make some content really quickly. So it's just taking a second, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, if you hit content and we can go ahead and create a step. And we can type it in. You know, we've got our title. So first step, and then foobar. Maybe add a little code snippet or something. Yeah, I was, I was looking for it. I'm like, okay, we got to prototype it right now. <laughs> okay. Mm, and then okay, okay. And then we can hit uh, publish. And then if you click on that info tab in the right. Mm -hmm. the very right. You'll see that we've got an entry ID. And so if you wanted mm -hmm. to do a lookup on like yeah. an explicit piece of content, you could do it by entry ID. Where where I end up doing this is I whenever I do micro copy, so usually I, I kind of let the site like crawl my content models to build mm -hmm. things out. So like mm -hmm. the way I would recommend setting this up is doing a like lookup on tutorials and then just be like, cool, here's my array of tutorials like build out the pages based on this. But if I wanted to do something like a, you know, a little micro copy string at the top, like uh, in Google code lab, they have like the little, this is the explanation of what it is. I would like hard code that as an, as an item um, and, and have it, you know, I can replace my micro copy that way. Like the Google the developer code lab provides a guided tutorial hands on. Oh, so what you're saying is you would actually in your content model, yeah. your tutorial would have a property that was a, like reference. I would do, I would do a lookup by tutorial yeah. to build that page, and so it'd be. Uh, if so you, you click could it, order it manually. Uh, no, no, no. So we would. This would be ordering probably by however the API turned it back, and we could set it to order on dates or alphabetical. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't understand but, why you would use the ID to render this because no, 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 no be not that the the one above uh, it, the one above it. Oh, the I would use if I was so that's kind of the difference there. So the tutorials would be like there's a group of tutorials, and I would just be like, hey, give me all of my tutorials, and then I would draw you know render the little cards based on that. But where the ID on the content is interesting is like mm. I would use that for something like micro copy because I know that you have extra copy that's kind yeah. of floating around. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't exactly. belong to a group. You yeah. basically define. You might yeah. look up. You might look up a single element by an ID. Yeah, that's that's how 
I would use that like get so entry cool. by ID function. Okay, that, yeah, I didn't know I had that question, but now I feel like I had it. Anyway. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was I was thinking that you had the question, so <laughs> maybe I was answering a question you didn't have. <laughs> no, no, I was curious when the idea was useful, and that makes sense because yeah. it's like yeah, if everything's a group, yeah. then we're just going to assume that when they click on here, that ID is going to be like a reference in the URL yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. But I didn't understand why. Um, you know, how, how deep we really go with that, yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, cool. So we've got our step. Are you happy with that? Or do you want more to the steps? Than um, the, and I, we wanted time, right? I feel like we're missing something with it. Yeah. Um, yeah, time would be cool. Oh, yeah, I have so many <laughs> ideas for this. <laughs> watch, yeah, watch yourself. Um, okay, time is interesting because it's not going to be a date, right? Because a date no. is, this is a duration. Oh, so. why don't we, why don't we click into it and we can take a look. So we can yeah. customize the way that it's viewed for people and we can see what, if you hit that create and configure oh, duration. and we can see what the options it gives us. So if we go to appearance, so appearance is the way that it looks for, for editorial folks. And so here we can actually customize the format and you're right. It looks like it's just dates so this probably yeah. isn't going to work so let's go ahead and kill this field cancel it and delete it and then probably do a number okay and we'll call this duration duration yep and let's see if they have a good appearance number editor drop down no no i think we can we could set the help text though to be like duration in minutes okay cool. save and then Save it. So let's go back to our step and let's go ahead and update the integer. And one of the other things we could do is we could actually require some of these things. If you want to do, we didn't require anything, but we could actually make these required fields. So like a person wouldn't be able to publish them without, without, uh, without it being full. Mm. Yeah. So you're talking about the front end validations while mm -hmm. we're working, while we're publishing yeah, yeah. through this interface. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay, let's go ahead and do the tutorial model then. So we have the steps figured out. Um, and then I think we also, we wanted a title as well. So the name of the tutorial. Title, short text, that's it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm addicted to configuring these just to see what's going on. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, required. Definitely. Okay, that's good. Then we're gonna have a, like a blurb, right? But that's uh, probably not rich text. No, I mean, you could do that. So rich text is kind of like markdown, but with more, more exciting uh, and more features. Uh, so like, I don't know if you you have any opinions on the markdown versus WYSIWYG debate, where markdown gives you like really structured content, you know, as a yeah. developer that like, it's gonna be uh, rigid, you know how to take that and you can turn it into something. Whereas WYSIWYG like is a really great editorial experience for like non-technical folks, you know, they can highlight something and hit bold, yeah, that kind yeah. of thing. Uh, but what it's really doing is it's creating HTML behind the scenes and it, that makes it really easy for non-technical folks to accidentally break it. And so with our rich text field, we wanted to kind of give you a bridge between those two things. So developers really get structured content that's really uh, simple mm -hmm. to convert into HTML. And because it's a structured blob, you don't have to worry about you know someone leaving an unclosed div tag or something like that, but still giving the editorial teams like the interface where they can highlight and they can make code blogs and it looks normal in the in the editor. So um, what you're kind of telling me is this is a WYSIWYG Markdown editor. It's like a light version. It's like a, somewhere in between it. So behind yeah. the scenes, we're we're holding onto a JSON blob, but for editorial folks, it feels like a WYSIWYG editor, but it's not. You know. So I don't know what, what is this? Like yeah. So, so I'm you like, can actually start <laughs> linking into other entries, which is where stuff gets really exciting. Okay. So if you want to like embed to another entry or like create a link to another entry, you can make that all in rich text. We're not going to have time to set that up today, but yeah, yeah. we did that in our stream from two weeks ago. If folks are curious to check it out. Okay. Very cool. So yeah, let's, let's, <laughs> I feel like you're getting distracted by it. No, 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 it's fine. Crazy, it's fine. You know? Um, uh, why don't we go back to the content model for the and tutorial? Yeah, and yeah. there's there's two or a few other things that we wanted to do. We want really. tags. Yeah, we wanted uh, so we wanted two sets of tags. We wanted language and we wanted categories. So the best way to do this would be text, and we can make a list of short texts. I think the best way would be reference, right? But that's a whole other thing. Yeah, that so reference is like a link to another content. So we would want a another. Would, so is that something we would do in Contentful? Imagine. 
you know, if I wanted to start tagging my blog posts, would mm -hmm. I actually be making a new content model called tags or is text actually better for that? I would use text for that. Yeah. Um, it's kind of and, too much to maintain the other one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Technical yeah. debt is definitely a real thing. Um, yeah. And we can we can do some stuff to make sure that it's it's consistent though. So we can do, uh, let's do let's do languages to start. Is this um, a list? Oh, is it yeah. a list? Yep. So we're gonna make it a list. Oh, cool. Language. Okay. And then if you go ahead and configure it, uh, and go into the validations, we can go ahead and we can make it a required field, and we can make it accept only specified values. So the bottom one. Oh, not that okay. one. Uh, oh, yeah. The very bottom, yeah. And then we can start typing in, so we can kind of add our tags here. So you could type in Python and hit enter. You could type yeah, in JavaScript yeah. and hit enter. And you can make it so people are only able to do whatever you know you require. Mm -hmm. um, and then if we go over to the appearances, we can actually change the way that it looks. And so right now it's just, it's in tag mode, um, but I'll we can make it a it. checkbox, we can make it a list. And, um, and that way we can guarantee that folks are only using the specific things that uh, you want. OK, that's cool. Yeah, and then you could do the same thing if you wanted to do categories as well and do something similar. Yeah, so we would go back to text. Mm -hmm. It's a list. Mm -hmm. We're going to call it a category. Or they called it event. Should we do like? Yeah, they they well, they did both. They did event yeah. and they did category. And category yeah. for them was like machine learning. And yeah, like, okay, we want category. Yeah. Okay. And so then our oh, it's not appearance is validation. Yeah. And we'll do let's say machine learning. Um, like web beginner friendly, mobile. sorry, beginner friendly, beginner friendly, um, experts level. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's yeah. good enough for our demo. Yeah, that's plenty. And then the, the last thing I want to add, um, and we're going to need this in a little bit is a slug, a slug field, mm, like a snail. Yeah. Like a snail. <laughs> so, uh, it's going to be text, short text, and, um, I you saw just call that. it. Yep. Yep. So name it something and then you can go ahead and grab it. I saw that validation somewhere. Yeah, it's uh, in the appearance. There it is. is it that and then it? you can require it. So this is probably validating it somehow because it's not going to allow spaces or something too, right? So this well, it, it will, but it'll auto generate the slug for you based oh, on the title. But yeah, cool. if you you could set the validation so it doesn't allow it unless um, unless like it's following a specific pattern and uh, Contentful supports like full regex and we've got a bunch of example regex in there as well. So you could set it up to like only allow a certain thing. I'm going, um, yeah. I'm making a difficulty. <laughs> cool. Difficulty rating. And I want to make this, I'm going to make this into a rating. rating. Yep. And um, there's probably a way, I mean, it should probably only be one, two, one, two, three, four, or five, right? Yeah, but so the rating uh, type will will take care of that behind yeah, the scenes, okay. the appearance for us. So get rid of and the accepted value. now my value. question is, will this rating render on the front end as stars? Or like, is do I have the ability to like render this like that? Yeah, so there's you there's know? two different front ends that you're thinking about here. There's the yeah. there's the, the, fr the display of the web app, and then there's the display of the like the the website that we're going to be building. Yeah, um, yeah. And so we can go take a look at the web app, but um, so go ahead and hit save and let's go ahead and make some make some content, make some tutorials. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Um, should we just copy Google code? <laughs> <laughs> I, probably not. I think that's like ripping it off too much. So okay. why don't we why don't we go ahead and get rid of that last unpublished and then I guess uh, you can delete. All right. All right. So let's add Let's add a tutorial. Maybe we can uh, import the Contentful um, docs. docs you, you have my permission to steal the Contentful docs. OK, OK. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, if I have to start writing tutorials on, on stream, it's going to be a little slow. Um, OK, so let me look, check out the Contentful guides. And uh, I expect you all to migrate to this as soon as we're done. <laughs> um, OK, let's see. Tutorials, learning GraphQL and React. Learning so those GraphQL. are video tutorials. Yeah. Um, and if you want written tutorials, you probably want to go into like our, there's like a tutorial thing in the bottom, I think, or just pick a, yeah. There we go. Pick maybe the first one. Create and deploy a Node.js a Node app. OK, let's just pretend we have two. And then I'm going to grab another one from another platform like Python. I'm a Python dev, so. You're Python dev? OK, uh, yeah. 
we won't get too far out of our comfort zone here. Um, content delivery in Python. Okay, cool. So let me just, um, the ironic part here is this probably, this might actually be contentful. Uh, okay, okay. So we have our tutorial. And so we're going to turn these into steps somehow. Yep. Yep. Um, I feel like it might be hard to turn this code in back into here, but I don't know. No, I don't think it'll be too crazy. It, I mean, um, so why don't we go ahead and start with uh, whichever one you like. Let's just start with the, this basic JavaScript one. Cool. Getting started so, with the type so we can set the title. All right. And okay. you can see that this log automatically happens. Yep. And then description, and we'll just copy this blurb. Mm -hmm. OK, this language is JavaScript. The category is um, beginner friendly and web, I guess. Oh, so this is not auto-completing. Uh, it should be. Did we? Uh, yeah. Here, let me save it, or I'll just publish it, and we'll go back into the content model and see. Um, oh, that was You're in tutorials. Cool. Yeah. Category shortlist, right? Yep. Settings. Validation. Huh. That's not auto-completing. That's weird. Um, Maybe try list. See what that does. All right. Content. Good. Save it. No, it doesn't do that either. Yeah, drop down is probably the best thing for now. Oh, there we go. OK, so um, it basically it doesn't. Yeah, drop down is probably the best. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Uh, or check boxes. Yeah, check box. That's what I mean. Yeah, and you already had that as checkboxes. Cool. Alrighty, content. Getting started with contentful JavaScript. Um, all right, there we go. Beginner friendly. <laughs> Beginner F. Okay, web. Um, our difficulty. Let's say it's like two. Cool. And that's it. So now we need to, we we'll publish this and we'll add our steps, right? Yep, we can add our steps. So we're going to make a new step here. Yeah. And I've lost that. So. OK, so let's imagine this is going to be the step will be called setup. And we're just going to basically take this. Yeah, part. I don't know how that's going to copy, but we can see what happens. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I think we're going to have to clean it up a little bit. Yeah, that's OK. I mean, it's pretty decent. Uh, when you kill the code, and the code itself has a copy feature built into it. That's a good um, idea. And yeah, I'll just um, like the code is the only thing that looks like it. It's weird. Yeah. Grammarly. I love Grammarly so much. <laughs> um, OK, so we can do copy. Uh, where was that? Set up the client. First, you need to do this in Node.js package and require in your code. Okay, Let's see what happens. And then highlight and it and make it code. Yeah. In the code. Oh, oh, no, no semicolon. <laughs> I told you I was going to be critical. Oh, shoot. <laughs> In the web browser, there are multiple ways. OK, OK. I, I'm learning Contentful as we do this. this yeah. <laughs> uh, there we go. OK, CDN, nice. Yeah. In this case, first install the package. Um, okay, that one that one copied perfectly. Yeah. Okay. And in your code, you can use it. I think it was just struggling with the longer ones. Yeah. It, that's always difficult. I mean, it's yeah. like everything, like all this stuff works in the browser until you start working with developer docs, and then nothing yeah. doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. It's well, what's like interesting is it's so the it's it's interesting in that like you know as developers like we start writing and building things right in the same place that we like publish it like we're we're hanging out in our IDEs or our Vim's and Emacs's or whatever like the entire time. But when mm -hmm. you get to when you look at like the workflow that editorial teams have, um, hey Adrian, Adrian, this is a rich text component. Uh, we had a question in the comments. Oh, cool. um, yeah, when you get into the editorial experience, their interface of like how they work is completely different, right? Like they start in Google Docs or 
old school Microsoft Word like held locally on your machine. Um, and like generally the person who writes the content isn't necessarily the person that's like seeing it through. Like, like even me, right? When I write technical tutorials for the Contentful blog, I'll write them and then I'll hand them off to an editor who uh, is phenomenal. I'm a huge fan of our editorial and our Marcoms team at Contentful. They make me sound not like a baboon. <laughs> Um, and they'll like help you know clean it up. They'll they'll edit it, uh, and then they'll pass it on to to someone else who'll go ahead and import it into Contentful. And yeah, I could definitely do that myself. But like that's kind of the uh, process that we have is that um, you know someone writes it, someone cleans it up, and then someone else puts it on Contentful, makes sure it looks okay in the front end, runs it through the preview process, and um, you know that that process could get even more complicated if we want. You know, you could get to um, you know, if you needed to bring legal involved, if you needed to, you know, have extra steps and maybe blocking parts. Um, and like you're like the writer who produces the content isn't empowered to necessarily fix things. Whereas a developer is like, usually you see it through the entire time. You know, you write the code, you make sure it works on pro on staging, you push it to prod, you like are responsible for making sure that the site doesn't go down and that it works correctly and it looks all right, which is, which is a little different. And um, yeah. So it's yeah, uh, well, like you're saying, it's like the main value is that you're letting like the developers not responsible for maintaining the content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? yeah, you're and, you're splitting those two things out as well. Yeah, yeah, like the developer should worry about the developer stuff, like mm -hmm. implementing the content and making the schema and the model, and like uh, like traditionally when you know when we're working with databases, the developer is like mm -hmm. actually in charge of maintaining the content too, yep. and. You know, anyone who's doing writing wants to be able to just publish it without like, why is the developer part of yeah. that flow? So yeah. Contentful makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, yeah, I, I remember times at uh, actually MLH back my last job where basically everyone on staff was uh, a developer in the beginning. And at a certain point we started hiring non-technical folks and the web app was in Ruby. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so yeah. anytime, and I wasn't a Ruby guy at all. And so anytime we needed to make a change like, um, like if we wanted to put up a new events page, it was it was always like tearing hair out to some extent, you know, like, hey, we've got to instantiate a new thing in the database. We've got to set this all up. And and it was it was a nightmare. Um, and yeah, something like this would have been would have been really useful. And uh, um, yeah. All right. I think this is plenty of steps. We can go ahead and start rendering this. Uh. OK. Um, my OCD makes me independent for this. <laughs> well, don't steal the entire tutorial. We got to start actually writing code at some point. That's we haven't true, done that true. yet. <laughs> okay, one last copy paste. I'm like, you got me started on this task now. I'm like, <laughs> I don't feel like <laughs> you're gonna have a whole new documentation website by the time we're done with this. Hey, at least you're only doing one tutorial. I know. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. Five. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. We got our tutorial. We got. You gotta set, set that duration so we've got the we've, so we've got uh, yeah. the we don't have to deal with things missing. Okay, five, five, they can all just be five. <laughs> um, I like this though. I feel like I'm getting in the work, like I'm in the in the flow state here, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like I'll and then go ahead and it. publish the changes. I think you've got a couple outstanding things. Cool. So um, we've got we've got some data now. Um, should we go and do some code stuff and figure out what that yeah, data looks like yeah. and what we get? Yeah, no. so uh, from, from my passive consumption of this tutorial, I've, I realize that I have to npm install Contentful. Yeah, so but it should be pretty fast. Why don't we do that? Um, I am going to use. This is actually great. This is the tutorial I would have recommended that we use to to figure out how to how to get stuff going. Yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a recursive loop. <laughs> yeah, uh, can you bump the font up on your terminal? It is very. Uh, yeah. Or are you just setting the WSL up? Um, I'm going to be using WSL. I, yeah. This is like my favorite. Yeah. Um, I just started using it. My my MacBook is in the shop, and uh, I miss it very much. And so I've been coding on my gaming PC, um, which has been has been a lot of fun. <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, yeah, I've been using the the WSL with Visual Studio Code, and I think I've really come around to it. I think I'm gonna. <laughs> I think I might be sticking with uh, with Visual Studio Code when I'm back on my MacBook. Oh yeah, VS Code ha has quickly become like the choice for programmers. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Um, I Yeah, I was a Mac developer for like 10 years. Yeah. And then I've just noticed all my friends moved to Windows. And mm -hmm. they were like, oh, yeah, it has Ubuntu on it now. I'm like, what? Yeah, all of my yeah. Windows friends work for Microsoft. And so I, I haven't been trusting them 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now yeah. that I'm trying, I'm, I think I'm becoming, I'm becoming one of them. OK, let me make a new um, uh, folder like on my desktop. Let's see, desktop. 
and we'll call it um, build lab select folder. And then we're going to do, um, just make sure we get to that folder. Uh, oh, you know what? I actually need to move it into, into something. Yeah, I was going to say, I think you need to do it in the Ubuntu thing. Yeah, I actually develop sometimes simultaneously in, um, uh, here we go. OK, that's one. Let's get another browser up here. So I'll actually be working in Windows and in Ubuntu at the same time because mm -hmm. I have client and server architecture. Yeah. So I, my uh, my whole thing just gets really complex. Yeah. Sometimes. All right. So that should be good. Now that um, build lab folder should be in here. Yeah. OK, then we'll do npm init. And I'm just going to do that because I always forget to do the one that bypasses that. <laughs> um, and we're going to do npm install contentful. Yep. I'm going to decrease this a little bit just so we don't have all this. Um, there we go. Uh, can you bump it up one more? Just it's yeah, kind of sure. hard to read at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Properties 28. Yeah, let's try it. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Uh, I would I would actually I go, go back, back yeah. to what you had. Yeah. My line, my, my stupid line, line beginning is like so yeah. big. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. And I'll also um, make sure that this is. Oh, am I in the same folder? Oh, did I do? Uh... Yeah, this is weird. Yeah, you oh, moved no. it. So you're going to have to reopen the folder. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> is this like intro to uh, to how to be a developer? <laughs> <laughs> OK, here we go. Now we're ready to go. I feel um... like every time my code is intro to how to be a developer sometimes. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna assume we're gonna like touch index.js. Yeah, or main.js or whatever. Index okay, is fine. Okay. Okay, so we have our uh we've got that. I'm gonna increase the size of this too. Okay, so we got main.js and let's follow that tutorial again. Yep. So we can so, do that var require contentful. You gotta get on the ES6, y'all. Okay. Um, okay, we got that. Mm -hmm. Install require contentful. Um, oh, you know what? I actually didn't put the keys in my environment. Yep, that's great. We can totally do that now, so I can show you how to get it. So, okay. um, yeah, and um, so the the nice thing, so we've got four major API. Well, five major APIs via contentful. Uh, we've got delivery API, preview API, images API, management API, and then GraphQL. Um, and the nice thing about four of the five of those is that they're read-only. The only API that is has write access is our management API. Oh. So, um, so as long as you don't display your management key, you can totally show these on stream and not worry about it. So, okay, that was my uh, question. Yeah, and so the example key, um, there's some example keys already there. You can you know rename it like stream key I showed on stream and. Uh, um, and that way, you know, if you want to delete it later or something, you can you can do that. But um, as well, um, and why don't you go ahead and copy paste that snippet where it was initializing the client? And that was like var client equals contentful dot create client, mm -hmm. and then the. Um, I think I've gone to that's a Python. This is another tutorial. Where he... Yeah, right here. Initialize the client. Let's do it. Okay. Cool. And we can go ahead and just replace the space ID and the the access token. Yep. Base ID access token. Yep. Okay. Cool. And go ahead and hit save. Right. Okay. So um, in this tutorial, we've got the option to request a single entry. We can request all entries. Um, but I think we should we should actually go take a look at the document, the API reference. So if you go click, I think it says read the reference documentation. Uh, like uh there's a link yeah if we go that should take us to the api reference mm. and i want to get oh not that api <laughs> reference uh it's on the if you go to the contentful docs the like root level it should take you to the api reference there we go so let's go into the cd cda the first one the content delivery api um, and we're going to start let's do a get entries and we can go ahead and uh, filter it by a type of content so we can click into the uh, query entries, and let's go ahead and take a look at what this this accepts. So right now, this one is accepting um, environments, access token, and there's an include filter for two. So there should be a filter on there for uh, content type. Let me see if I can see it. Let me pull it up. Uh, 
Um, yeah, so there's in the search parameters drop down, the first one there is content type. Sorry, I feel like I just lost on the on the left side, the little uh, the big. Um, yeah, we want uh, no, no, no. Uh, next one. Uh, hit uh, hit again in Control F. It should be under listed under search parameters. That one. Cool. So here's our query entries, and we can go ahead and we can hit the JavaScript sample. Mm, okay. Okay. Cool. So this is the one that we're going to be using. Um, so if you if you scroll down, you can see that get entries is going to request a of content type ID. So we're going to put in our tutorial ID there, and then it'll return everything uh, that's of type tutorial. So, um, so I will put uh, tutorial here. Yes, I think that's what it's called. Um, but you can double check that in the in the content model. Yeah, um, I'm also wondering. Like, I didn't put a space ID, and I saw that was in. I do have a space. Yeah, like you have the space property. ID in the client. Yeah, there's another property though. Maybe it's the space. Oh, environment. so environment ID is environment. Uh, yeah. environment ID. So you know how GitHub has the different branches. You've got your mm -hmm. master branch or your main branch, and then you've got like your forks. Um, Contentful is kind of similar, but not quite the same. Uh, if you go into settings and environments, we can take a look around it. So your default kind of production content mm -hmm. is being served on um, environments, is I think in the near the bottom or near the middle. Um, it's here, right? Environment settings. Uh, oh. Down, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Environments are so you're you've got right now a uh, so that's just translation. This is locales, so not this one. This one. So you you start with this default master, um, and that's kind of your um, like production y like thing. So that's where all of our caching goes. That's where the uptime guarantees if you're an enterprise customer live. Um, that's like something that we assume is like uh, like you want to have really good reliability and that like it needs to work. And now if you want to have like a second thing, if you want to change your content model, um, let's say you want to you know, delete a field right, and your front end requires that field to be there. You want you don't want to delete it in the production area because that'll bring your front end down. So you can hit add environment, and it'll take uh, it'll let you uh, it'll take your master and it'll make a copy of it. Mm -hmm. So you can have like backup or like feature branch or whatever. You can go ahead and you can make those changes on that new environment, and then whenever you're ready to promote it or upgrade it, you can just hit change alias target, and you can swap them. So that way, you're you have like a safe area to make like changes, um, and uh, it's not going to like you know screw screw you up when you make a deploy or any or when you you know you can make that switch as you make a deploy, so it won't mm -hmm. break while you're doing development. But since since it's just us, we don't need to worry about that right now. Uh, it just def if you don't give it the environment, it just defaults to master, um, which yeah. is really nice. Huh. Um, I want to run this code. Cool. Let's do it. Let's run it. Oh, I called it main.js. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so double check or, it's called tutorial. It says prob probably a filter or ordering. Yeah. It, I did double check it was called tutorial, yeah. um, right? Yeah, so that's the name. That's the thing that it looks to the developers. Go ahead and click into it, and we can get the, uh, the you, it's called progress right now, because we renamed it. Yeah, See so that I thought that might be it. OK, OK. Yeah. And there we, we go. go. So now we've got we've got our data, and um, we can we can scroll through this. So um, we can see that we've got like our. I mean, so it's just a JSON blob. So you could you can you know import it as a. Yeah. So I can I can basically I think I can do this right. Compilog mm -hmm. results zero. So you're going to need to step into. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Let's see, does that work? Let's see. Uh, oh. I think. It feels... I don't know if I um, did this promise right. Uh, just return O. Oh, that's not right. It's like this. Right. I forget how to how to drop script. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see if this works. That doesn't. This doesn't seem like we need this though. Uh, what was it doing before? It was just it doing was a call to logging and a callback. Yeah. Um, let's see. I got too cocky and I was like, I'll just, I'll just uh, do it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering because maybe it needs. Oh yeah, there we go. That's why because it's, it's response it's items. Yeah. Yeah. So we should be able to do. Um, 
exactly uh, what you had, but with yeah. with the dot items. Yeah. Okay. Console log results items zero fields steps. I think you spelled fields wrong. Yes. Yeah, let me see if that works. Nope. Nope. Let's see what's in items. Oh, are you a breakpoint person? Because this is like how I do stuff. No, I do it. I do it exactly how you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, you already stepped into items. You returned items. So you returned response to items. So you're already there. You're already in the array. You should just be able to do results zero. OK. Yeah, let's just do it one at a time instead of trying to be smart yeah. about it. And then you could do dot fields. So this is this is interesting. Why don't we hold for a second here? So um, sys is kind of like all that metadata stuff. So like created at, updated at, revision, language. And when you get into multi-language support, it can be really useful. Um, mm -hmm. And if you want to like order it by like date or something like that, like these are useful fields. And then fields is like actually what the the editorial team is like setting up as well. So kind of a little, little different there. I know what it is. We're actually uh, we have the classic ES six promise race condition. <laughs> That's what we're doing here. Um, oh yeah, so, the yeah, because I didn't await yeah. it, and so what's happening is this is actually the console log, the later yeah. console log, and this is the yeah yeah. So let's see what happens now. I think oh, I need to call that. Nope. Undefined. Okay, this makes a lot more sense though. No. Okay, so that is our our. So results is still undefined. Oh, maybe because this is not still returning return response items. Hmm. Well, there's some DX stuff. Maybe you should uh, um include the this kind of code. This version, yeah. Yeah, because because if we look at your uh, what's being provided, the docs are the kind of the other way, and we're already we're already out of it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of saying use a promise, but yeah. it's not really. I mean, of course, you know, any yeah. any most JavaScript developers will get that, but. Um, no, you're okay. definitely you're definitely right. We should fix that. Uh, we I should fix that. Not we. I'm gonna I'm gonna be the one yeah. to go fix it. So. <laughs> I'll fix it. <laughs> they give me access to edit the docs, so I think that means I I I have to go fix it, which is fine. I like doing that stuff. Um, I think fields is wrong. It's uh, you have a nice file. Fields. Hey man, at least you're spelling it uh, wrong consistently. That's the important part in programming. Is it's okay if you spell it wrong as long as you're consistent and you're incorrect spelling. If you spell my keyboard, you'd understand. Why <laughs> um, okay, so it looks like we got that, and now we actually have more system objects yeah. for each of those steps, right? Yep, yep. So those each of those steps is going to have a sys. It's going to have a create date. It's going to have a type. Um, Someone, someone in the comments is actually asking, why didn't we call sys meta and saying that that's confusing? And I have no idea, actually. That is a great question that I don't know the answer to. Why maybe if call... maybe if uh, Stefan is still in the comments, he might have an answer, or if any any other Contentful folks are watching. Um, but uh, otherwise, ping me on the Slack, and I will go find out for you <laughs> after the stream. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is this meta, Shai? No, so one of the one of the comments uh, that we got is from Tolis, and Tolis is asking why did we call it? Why didn't we call sys meta? And saying that calling it oh. sys is confusing. And I'm saying I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. I'm gonna have to go do some research on that one. Mm. Um, <laughs> um, cool. So we've got our steps. We've got our fields. Um, cool. This was super easy, by the way. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're it, not. Yeah. We're not even at the cool part yet. So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and do something with rich text. So why don't we go ahead and look at that source in the fields for each of those steps? Why don't we dig into the source and see what that looks like? Okay. Um, my first my first thing was like low dash. <laughs> uh, how do I do this? Not in low dash. Like for yeah. Oh, just like a loop. <laughs> I mean, you can install low dash. Low dash is probably going to be pretty fast. Yeah. Low dash has just become like. Yeah, no, I feel you. I feel you there. Um, do you want to explain Lodash in case there's anyone in the audience that yeah. hasn't heard of it? So Lodash is um, a, it's kind of like. I think of it as like kind of jQuery, like a major helper library that like just adds utility, a bunch of. Yeah, yeah. This kind of talks. it's basically a bunch of utilities. Yeah. And when I'm saying like, I can't write a for loop, it's because. <laughs> Lodash hat like has a really has, good way of doing it. 
has a great way of doing yeah. it and re-engineered my brain to basically yeah. be like, how do I do this in Lodash? Because when you when you start working with Lodash, you get into a pattern of working where mm -hmm. everything is um, Under, underscore something. Yeah, but also like you can start swapping it out. So if you have something like an each or mm -hmm. like a for each or whatever, like you might just turn it into like a map or mm -hmm. a filter. And so your your uh, your code starts looking like this, and it's really mm -hmm. easy to follow because it's like one level is like loop, the next yeah. one is map, and then it's filter, and it's like yeah. really yeah, and it's for big data kind of big data processing stuff. Yeah, um, it's not for big data. It's more like yeah, yeah. Um, I've been using a lot of the analytics functions, like like uh, min and max and stuff. Mm -hmm. These are really cool. But for now, let's. Um, I'll just pretend like I know how to use JavaScript. And <laughs> for each step, we'll go in and we'll log out. Hey man, I still Google how to do for loops in uh, even in Python, which is my like go to. I still like double check it every once in a while, especially when you're like switching back and forth between multiple languages. It's always a uh, like a thing to like remember. Oh, like do I how you know do I parenthesize it here? Do I curly brace it there? <laughs> you know? I know, and also in JavaScript, there's like 20 ways to write loops yeah. too. Yeah. They yeah. keep changing, so it's like, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, so these are our steps, and yep. we want to look at the source of them. Now we can see that, but we still can't see the content. So um, we want to do step, spell the word fields right, con <laughs> content, right? Yeah, let's see it. See that array, which I'm going to guess is like a bunch of lines. Nope. Oh, it's under five. Step fields. Source content yeah. because we called the content field the field for our rich text source. Okay, so this is exciting stuff, and we can let's take a second to like poke around here. So this is what our rich text object is giving us, and you can see that it's actually sublinking into into other stuff. And you can kind of take a look at the node type, and we can see like okay, this is p text, and if we scroll up, we should see uh, we should see maybe some code tags or some headings or something, depending on what we. Can you scroll up a little bit, and maybe we can poke around with it. Yeah, so we've got like a heading two and and kind of something like that. So it's kind of similar to Markdown oh, in that like you know okay. there's st it's structured, but we're getting it as a JSON blob. So um, if you go ahead and look up the uh, Google Contentful Rich Text Renderer, and that'll give us the documentation to convert this JSON object into something useful. Um, so yeah, rendering rich text, and we want to it's up on GitHub as well. So let's do the HTML renderer. That one, cool. So we're going to be using this package to convert that rich text node into HTML. So we'll be doing it programmatically rather than like having the editor do it, which means that in theory it should be a lot safer. Um, so like an editor isn't going to forget to close a tab, um, or you know the programming language isn't going to forget to close a tab. And so we we know that we're going to have functionally complete HTML. And also we can start. We're not going to have time for this today, but down the down the line we could jump in and we could start injecting like, hey, like I want you to handle a p tag this way. So like use this CSS, use this kind of stuff. Um, and we can also start customizing it and adding things to it as well. So we can say, hey, like I have a, like when you do the inline entry rendering, you can kind of make it behave and output things in a certain way, but we're not gonna have time for that. So let's just do the the basic rendering for now. Um, okay, I've converted this <clears throat> um, snippet into yeah. a like ES kind of five style yeah. because I don't think I'm running the right version of node locally. And yeah. so um, just... make sure that we got it working correctly. Yeah. And yeah, so we got so essentially cool. what I did, I just imported this. Checking thing. the function is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. before we get to it. So cool. so now the idea is so we have this document to HTML yep. string, which should take this content and yep. turn it to HTML, which exactly. Can... Yeah. So if you right. want to throw that function in the console log, it should give us a HTML output. Yeah. So if we do document eight and we do it here instead of here, or just do this. Yeah, I would just do it like that just for now. And oh, I lost my uh, lost my turn. Oh, we're getting uh oh, we lost you too. So let's see. Let's hopefully Ian comes back. I imagine he just closed the tab by mistake. Uh, <laughs> closed the streaming tab uh, by mistake. Uh, I feel like I got a I got a riff for a couple minutes until maybe. <laughs> uh, hopefully he notices. I'll give him a call though, just to make sure that he he realizes. Um, Just in case he hasn't noticed. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I guess I can take a second to plug some of our links since we're at the hour mark. Um, uh, let me pull up the slides. Oh, there we go. He's back. Awesome. Um, hey, Ian. I was just calling you to to let you know that. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you closed yeah, the streaming like, tab. Just cleaning, just cleaning up a little bit, you know. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, let's go back to let's go back to the code. We we're making good progress. Yeah, we're good. We're doing well. Um, share my screen. Um, where am I at? Okay, yeah. So I'm just basically yeah. trying to get that. Yeah. Do you mind bumping up the code font just a little bit as well? Yeah, there we go. Um, okay, so I, I ran it, but uh, I, what we I get? didn't get. I'm not getting the actual. Um, I'm getting this right. Nothing. Huh? Yeah, that's weird. And uh, am I, should I be putting the content in there, like the array? Uh, stop at source. Uh, do it to source. Okay. Get, yeah, sense. get rid of the content. I think we went one too deep. There we go. There we go. Yep. And so you can see that we've got HTML here, uh, which is great. Um, so we can go ahead and poop this out onto a page, and uh, we can use it um, as well. Yeah. So we can do like FS. Um, Follow. Oh, we're doing a, a write. So cool. I guess we're, we're making a static Yeah, we're about to do yeah. really dirty. Um, let's see if we can do right file sync. Uh, and so we've got that um, we've got that slug field. So we could call it slug dot HTML. Okay. Okay. I think it's if I remember off the top of my head, it's step. Add it slug. Uh, no. So the slug is on the tutorial level. So it's one level okay. higher. So it's response slug. This is this is like such a guess here. Well, I would I would do this a little higher. Like I would do like grab the HTML, do a loop, grab the build out like a list of the HTML, and then you know. Oh, uh, yeah. I see. I'm gonna see if I can just run this really fast because yeah. this is um, just turn it into a web server really quickly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it doesn't make it, like this doesn't really make sense, yeah. but it's um okay. Response. Not, I, I might yeah. might just stop here. Um, Results. Uh, results. Slug. Um, well, we're we're like um, we're gonna rewrite the file for each step. So you might want to do it a little. If you do it a little higher, like um, you just do like a you know. Yeah, you want to group them basically, right? Like you yeah. want to make. Um, let's do it the right way. Let's do like an express server. Um, yeah. Yeah. Rather than going down this path, I just wanted to see if I could do a one liner. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So so let's get rid of this FS stuff, yeah. and essentially we'll do like Express, I guess, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's just make sure we're back here. Yeah. Really. I still think you're gonna want to grab the data in like a loop or something, but. Just yeah. To, well, that's the cool yeah. thing about low dashes. We could probably yeah. turn to do that pretty quick. Um. So you basically want to do. I don't understand what you're saying when you say you want to grab the data in a loop. Like um, um, the the so the rich text right because it's going to be you're going to have three different rich text things in your array and you want that to show up on one tutorial page. Oh, okay. So you're right. saying like we want this to be. Um, I still don't understand because okay, let's go back to the, um, the Google Code bot. So you're saying that that. This page For, is one page. Yeah, yeah. I mean, behind the scenes, this is one page. It's just the way that they're showing uh, it. It's, yeah. I was thinking this would be multiple pages. Okay. No, no, no. This is. I mean, you could take a look at the slug. I think it's all one page. I yeah, it doesn't. The, nothing uh, changes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And probably just the, the fastest way to handle it right now is to do it as yeah. one page. Okay, so you want us to basically accumulate the yeah. these different steps yeah. into 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 yeah. yeah. What okay, does Express so. use for page rendering? Is it handlebars or something? Or um, I think it's custom. Okay. Yeah. I mean, let's set up a uh, like a super basic Express server, and then like we'll just, however Express like handles page rendering, we'll just like poop it out. This is a good time to look at uh, how why Lodash is cool because yeah. so so we had this each which was console logging, mm -hmm. um, right? And so it's like, okay, there's the that yeah. now. If I change this into map. Yeah. And we do. Um, oh, and then we'll get the array back or something. Yeah. Then you just get the array back. And so now we'll Man, do I gotta start using Lodash. That's really convenient. Yeah. That's really easy. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's freaking awesome. I mean, I'm always I'm to... always struggling with uh, with getting my map functions to work properly, and that's really nice. 
it's, yeah. Um, I'm sorry I'm turning this into a low dash. Uh, hey, hey, I'm learning something. I like it when I learn things. So it's okay. Uh, so we've got the we got the express server set up. Um, cool. We'll just want to do a simple express page render, app, which I'm sure will be like three lines. Because yeah, hopefully. Just, I hope it's three lines. <laughs> yeah. Um, if that's any more thousand, and all we're gonna do is. Um, we're going to make a new endpoint that'll just be the root endpoint. And mm -hmm. when we get the, we got some questions, more questions in the chat. Okay. Uh, um, Digital Geonosis is asking, is this the Contentful office in the background? No, this is this is my apartment. We are all uh, on work from home right now. Um, and then Adrian is asking, are they not using Pug by default? I'm not sure I know what Pug is in that context. Let me Google it. Pug Node.js? This is another like uh, easy. I don't know. I still don't understand what it is. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand the question, Adrian. Um, uh, for the Express Render Template, Pug is the Express JS Render oh. Template. Oh, okay, okay. So, I think yeah, we're yeah. Being... That's actually what I'm wondering right yeah. now. Is can we just send the HTML into here? Well, so it's going to return as an array yeah. right now, right? So we can do um but we can do items join yeah like new line or something and just see like can we yeah. do this? Let's see. This is how I code. Like I code like <laughs> I'm I'm asking myself questions the whole time. Okay, cool. we, we got, got a, we got a web server up. Don't close my wrap my tab again. Yeah, don't close the streaming tab. <laughs> <laughs> items join is not a function. Okay, what is items? Uh Items is an array right now. Is um, it should be. Yeah, I don't know if I'm actually properly um, uh, returning it. I think you actually have to call the server to get it to run. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh yeah. Okay. Now we get to items. Pug is the name, the new name for J templates. Oh wait. Okay. There we go. And now we're going. I'm gonna actually put this up. There, uh, put this down here. Bump the bump the font up a ton on that one. Hey, there we go. Yeah. Okay, not exactly what we wanted, but it's well. Close. It's still coming back as an array, so maybe do zero. Um, I feel like should, this should work. Uh, I have a watcher nodemon main main .js. Yeah, that should do it. There we go. Yeah, we have it. We have a we have a developer portal. So we have yeah, a tutorial. Yeah, we're good. Let's launch it. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, this is awesome. Um, so yeah, we've got we've got a bunch of data. Uh, this is great. Right now, we're just doing the one tutorial, and we can we can maybe make a front page. Or I do want to make sure that we're being respectful of your time. We're at twelve fifteen or eleven yeah, fifteen yeah, for yeah. you. Uh, I'm good um, to keep going though. Yeah, I'm happy to keep going. Let's do. Um, maybe we can drop a basic CSS in here and do yeah. like a, like a. Yeah, maybe grab Skeleton or Bulma or even Bootstrap, I guess. I mean, we can do like, yeah, we can do like a Bootstrap and like a jQuery, like navigate the pages yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, If you want to do the cool. page nav. Yeah, um, so maybe we'll drop Bootstrap in here through CDN or something easy. Yeah. Oh, you know, that's going to be hard because we're just, this is like now getting into all this like templating stuff, which yeah. maybe, maybe we should, like, we should do. Um, is this, a, would you say this is a typical Contentful flow? This is how I end up doing stuff. Is it for me? It's like figure out what the data structure is, put some put some stuff in the content model, get the content model up on the page, style the page, and then kind of like there's a back and forth between it. Yeah. Um, but like this, I mean, this kind of way of working kind of stops pretty much as soon as you bring in a non technical person. That's when you start like doing things like environments like when when it's just you working on your own your own app it's cool mm -hmm. to do the back and forth but when there are people that like are dependent on the content model being functional and being up it kind of it kind of does shift a little bit and it changes it changes the way that you work but yeah for me it's largely like grab the content see how the json blob is coming out get the json blob to work properly on the page you know and and just like back and forth okay I, I I meant like this like express kind of rendering and like calling the API like this oh, is a very typical getting started yeah. kind of, kind of flow, uh, right? yeah I guess I, it's been a while since I've done something like this I usually end up using like I've been using 
11 D a lot. And so, you know, that's a static site. So it's a, it's a little mm -hmm. different, but, um, but yeah, it ends up being pretty, pretty similar. So all like I'm when I'm doing do Python it. stuff, it's, it's pretty much all like this. It's, you know, setting up routes and then like, like the next thing I would do is like do a route on the slug, like, uh, yeah, like uh, yeah. and you know, cross, like do a lookup by the slug. Like, yeah, you would do this. Yeah. Right. And then and like do, do, do the client yeah. get in yeah. the, in the route rather than at the higher level. Cause right now we're going to have to reset the server or no, you're, you're doing the get item right there. So it should, if you change contentful, it'll, as soon as you refresh the page, it'll, it'll go do another get, which is nice. Yeah. On every, yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm trying to find a nice way to do templates without getting too deep into it. I mean, handlebars is pretty good for like basic stuff. If you've used yeah. that before. Um, or mustache, I think is the other one. I have EJS. Yeah, I'm more talking about the 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 in integration. I guess we can mm -hmm. just do this. Um, I don't know if pug is like the default, and now this is not something we can do anymore. But let's just see. Uh, index. Like it's been so long since I've done Express Raw. <laughs> uh, partials, partials. Okay, so maybe we can just make. I don't know. I feel like this is getting too complicated. Do you have, do you have a simpler idea for how we can just add a, a layout around this HTML? Yeah. Adrian's saying that there isn't a default engine anymore. OK, OK. So I like that we have a resident express. Expert. Yeah, Adrian, we've got to invite Adrian to the stream. Adrian was yeah. on the stream a couple of weeks ago, and, and that was a lot of fun. I really <laughs> enjoyed that. Over from here, I'm like, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to get Bootstrap in here without it being like a whole thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, let me take a look at the the mustache documentation. And yeah, see how... mustache, uh, mustache. I don't want to dump the variable in the file, but I don't want to have to make a like a whole nested subdirectory thing going. Yeah, logic with templates. Yeah, mustache might be. Mustache is super super fun. Um... Because you're, I mean, you're gonna have to set up like the the. Um the the uh ugh, the template somewhere but yeah yeah I'm like you're not gonna get out of that yeah okay I might, I might as well just start working on that then <laughs> folder uh view to see like simple express ejs setup man you're gonna get like 30 different opinions with with the word simple <laughs> i know yeah. Oh, uh, Adrian is, is recommending that we use handlebars. Yeah. Okay. Handlebars. Handlebars is pretty fast here. Installation. Express handle view handlebars app get res render home. Yeah, this is this is easy. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Adrian. <laughs> Shout out to Adrian. Yeah. Gonna tag team. We'll just have him come in and yeah. do that. The handlebars is extra utilities on top of mustache, is what Adrian oh, is saying. Okay. So we have express handlebars, and then you mind bumping the... up the font in the in the documentation a little bit? It's kind of hard to read. Perfect. Express express handle. Uh, where was I? App views. Okay. Views. Home dot handlebars. We use handlebars a lot at Courier. If. Uh, what is Courier? Uh, Courier is uh, a really great notification uh, API. That uh, that's where Adrian is from. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, we uh, we built a really fun little. Um, uh, <laughs> Adrian said, "Shameless plug." I'm plugging the stream that we did <laughs> together. So, <laughs> if you want to learn about Courier, go watch the stream we did together. We took we took a uh, a um, one of my old projects. I had a little superhero blog, and we we made it so anytime I added a new bit of content, it would send a notification out. So you get an email being like, "Shy has published a new thing. Come mm -hmm. watch the mm -hmm. watch the thing." Tolis is, is saying that he thought that everyone was using React these days. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're not getting into that. So. We're not. We're not doing that. <laughs> I have been using React a lot recently, but uh, like yes, but also no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can get a homepage going here. Um, yeah, there's already enough of us looking trying to remember which documentation we should be <laughs> using. Yeah, I can't even write a for loop at this point. So let's. <laughs> okay. Um, 
Hey, yo. Yeah, Adrian's saying that they use uh, Gatsby JS with Contentful for their blog. So okay, I see. I'm excited for that. It looks like we got, um, I don't know, are these just, yeah, these are just extensions, I guess. I don't know if I'm actually in a. I don't know, man. Your your thing is too small for me to read there, so I have no idea what's going on. I think you've actually got to like fill it in with with um, EJS stuff. Yeah. Yeah, like the the like the triple curly kind of stuff, and then mm -hmm. and, like you pass the you pass it the body when you do it. All right, that should that should be it now. We should see there the word home. Yeah. So you know, instead of. Yeah. Okay. So we've got our handlebars rendering. Um, mm -hmm. I will now, well, let's just see if we can get that blob mm -hmm. kind of rendering in there. Maybe even if it's just raw. Hey, works. Um, so what I mean, it shouldn't be raw. We'll be passing it the version that's been rendered. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, let's close that side. Yeah. Bar. Triple curly is a, is string safe. will render HTML. Yes. Yes, exactly. So, okay. I'm actually going to make this bigger. So we have, um we're not sending so an express sorry an express we're not sending a variable yet so we got to go lower and find out how to do that um, layout false where are the variables helpers show type oh is that it it's just like just like send it as the second property i think that's it right uh we'll we'll find out And then you're going to want to turn your gets and stuff back on, undo the comments. Right. And then and then we should be able to, uh, this is actually the rendered, let's call this some um, rendered steps. Yeah. And then we'll just run, we'll send that in. Yeah, and we'll probably need to call it somewhere in the template. Yes, exactly, yeah. So in the, in the here, we should be yeah. able to do triple. Let render steps, yeah. Yeah, and so let's see. Hey, there we there go. There we go. Okay. We got it. Um, I'm like, commit, commit. We got to commit now. Yeah, and we could also we could also like change the title as well while we're here too. Like we could you know change it to whatever the title of the tutorial is. It's so like triple title. Triple. Oh, well, well, you can well, leave. You can, yeah. Oh yeah, because you're gonna did. need to leave the H1 in there because it's just a short text. It's a it's a string. Okay. And then we're going to do a triple title. I, uh, I think this is probably just a double right now, but we, we can also check. We need to supply that here. As, yes. So as title is going to be, it's going to be uh, item. Uh, it's, is it items? So where our get items is, I think, giving it too high. We're, we might want to yeah. return a little higher or just return like the return a second field or something. Yeah, just a, yeah. Adrian saying just a double use the triple sparingly. Yeah, so I think we need to do okay this because hold on. Where I mean we could do yeah, the let steps getting... lower, like move let steps into the into the lower the function and yes. then return just return the response. Okay. Or response, yeah, response. Uh, I don't. I don't think it. Oh, it is called results. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Or map. You're going to want to call that results. Yeah. yeah. And then steps. And then. Um, and that should all that should all keep working. I don't think you need to change it. Uh, I don't know why I am. I just I'm too far in now. OK. <laughs> um, and then our title is going to be. Um, I think it'll. Did you okay. undo the sample home? Items is not defined. Yeah. Maybe I don't need to be doing it. Need to be uh render steps items join. Oh, okay, that's why. Well now you're overriding your your get items. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, I would just change let steps to let results, the first one. Okay, so let's uh let steps equals let result. Okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, and then you and might want another results. let. Sorry. Hmm? I'm like just like pair programming is so nice. <laughs> Uh, item is not defined, main JS 40. Um, oh yeah, because we got rid of it. Bad console log. Okay, so now now we got um, a big white page, which is better than what we had. This is rendered steps. steps. You changed it back. Yes, because I'm 
I'm ruthless. There we go. Okay. There we go. Title, now we can pass it the title. Yeah, which is uh, uh, results dot field. Uh, and I think I think it's an array, so it's probably going to be results zero dot fields. Dot title. And then dot title. Let's see if that's right. Hey, yep, there we go. We got a title. It's awesome. Okay, great. Um, let us. I'm going to close some of this stuff out. And then we're don't going... close the streaming. <laughs> <laughs> Bootstrap quick start. Yeah. Starter template. That's what I want. Oh, come on. <laughs> Can I just view source on that? I hope they're hosting it and they're not doing it. Well, I guess they they would be. That would be stupid. Like, what would you like get a local host or something there? <laughs> yeah, I like Bulma for this. Like, Bulma's really fast. What is Bulma? It's another like uh, bootstrap style, like CSS starter kind of thing um it's much lighter than bootstrap um there's like a bunch of like minimal kind of bootstrap alternatives skeleton is another popular one where you're basically just like getting the grid and like a little bit of styling yeah yeah um i i don't know i'm kind of like like I hey, if you're into bootstrap we probably shouldn't we probably shouldn't waste time learning another technology yeah, We've got enough yeah. Of that. <laughs> i i basically like I, I'm one of these people that like I experiment with these old tech and then yeah. I just like rely on the new stuff. I mean Bootstrap like, isn't that I old stuff and rely on the old stuff. Yeah. Bootstrap yeah. isn't I mean they just released what Bootstrap seven or Bootstrap six? Like what version are we on? Oh, they're on four. Okay. I'm thinking of other stuff. I feel like four was recent. Maybe I'm thinking of Font Awesome. Oh, Font Awesome had another rewrite. Oh, Font Awesome is uh yeah, has totally redone their stuff. Um Okay, we have like a little basic thing. Should we do? Let's yeah, do and the code is looking good as well. Like it's it's uh, Bootstrap. It looks like is already handling the code stuff. It's handling the code stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's cool too. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. sweet. Um, I, that's the thing I don't like about Bootstrap is that why is it red? <laughs> like, why are we? Um. Okay, so this so something I'm noticing here. Maybe we can go back into Contentful. Is like. Yeah. This doesn't have a break, right? Yeah. And so I can go now into Contentful and make and go find that step, yeah, and edit it. Um, right in content, and that step is called var client. <laughs> oh, can I search for that here? Uh, you can. So the yeah, initialize the client. Okay. Uh, maybe it was the other one. Yeah, I wonder if it's the other one. Set up. I don't see it. Yeah. Maybe we can just keep going and maybe we'll find out where I think it might have just been a lack of a new line afterwards. Maybe it's um because I joined with new lines, maybe? Yeah. You need an API key and a space ID to initialize the client. Yeah. So, how would you recommend you find? So, like, this I is like a. Chuck, I would just chuck the whole string in and. Yeah. Is this what you would recommend to someone who was like. And with this little content, that's kind of how I'd handle it. As you got yeah. more content, I would start digging into filters. Like, I would set it content type on space and I would set it to like really hammer down into like what I'm looking for. Maybe just add another enter. And then, okay. Now we're gonna check the app and see what happened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. What if I delete this? I wonder if it was just like a random kind of. Maybe it was from a copy and paste or something. Yeah. Maybe like we we brought over a bunch of extra characters or something. Yeah. The, like yeah, hidden characters. A yeah. New line or something. Yeah. Well, this is what I'm saying. Like we we <laughs> even internally at Contemple, we have someone that that takes our. The content and like imports it and like they spend time to make sure that everything looks correct and stuff and um okay we're looking for like a sidebar thing this one is right let's just take this one inner fluid you're trying to set like a list of tutorials hey yeah. we got a new person hi slide underscore nt so we have it, our um, little sidebar, and now yeah. what's interesting is we kind of want to render those steps again. Yeah. Um, but we don't want to. We just want the title 
here. So it'll be body. Um, yeah, so like it'll be like step titles or something. Yeah, and so we can make an array of those. And it can actually be. Um, oh, this is getting confusing. How about sidebar? We can actually just return the step um, .fields .title and get rid of the HTML. Yeah. yeah, and then I'll point out how cool Lodash is again. It's just organized. Like even though it's confusing. It's <laughs> yeah. Just... No, no, I'm into it. I'm into it. So this is this isn't giving us HTML though. So we're gonna probably have to use a, a loop in um, handlebars to handle the yeah, multiple steps. We could do this. Now uh, let's just use a let's just use a, a like a built-in loop and do it properly. <laughs> like a you mustache so quickly you're like no we're not doing that like a handlebar yeah. loop should be should be pretty simple like yeah. it's just a template loop it should take like a it's just mostly looking it up let's see if we can um get that uh, uh just, just like an empty thing or something okay yeah oh hey look it's, it's close enough right um it's okay it's, the the loop <laughs> we're good, we're good. let's go we're you good. got it yeah this is like um, okay, now we need to do a handlebar. Loop. Yeah, it's um, in the each section. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, Adrian beat us to it. He's better than Google. It's just, uh, it's just <laughs> exactly. It's just, just the word each. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, and then it's just this. Yeah. Oh, did someone knock on our door? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. And we're going to do this as like a. I think, I think someone just knocked on our door. Oh, okay. oh my roommate's on top of it. You got that. Uh, you know what's funny is during a lot of my calls, like people are like, oh, oh, that's my timer for the chicken. If you want to take a look oh. at the, the stream, uh, Adrian just gave us a code snippet. You could probably just. Oh. Thank you very okay. much. Is he, is he uh, beating us to writing this stuff? Yeah, pretty go. much. <laughs> <laughs> So I've got our um, I've got our list here. Yeah. Um, I don't think we'll go as far as oh, we're not going to do different pages. We're going to do some kind of JavaScript, right? Yeah. So, like, so we might want to we might want to add a slug to the step, and then we can do like the the you know in page linking. Oh, cool. Okay. So in main JS, we're going to return actually something like this, which is why don't we just return step fields actually, right? Yeah, you could just return the array. Is it well, it's an object? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I mean. And then, yeah, and then we can do this. Would be, uh, oh, sorry, it's actually here. Yeah, We're not using her. this title, right? Yeah. And then let's double check that works. It's the same. And then we can do um, this slug. Yeah, but that might fail because slug doesn't exist on the. Oh, okay. So we got to go into contentful <laughs> now. Yeah. And see, this is what I mean about the back and forth, right? Like you, you yeah, kind of know what yeah. you need until you actually like get into it and uh, and start adding stuff. It's so similar to every schema definition. Anytime yeah. I've started a anything with a database, mm -hmm. it's so similar. You never get it on the first try. Like it, yeah, it, you never do. Yeah, um, that's it, right? Oh no, we can make the pipe slug. Yeah, we're gonna change the appearance. Really, I became proficient in this. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is crazy. Yeah, I like I like this. Uh, yeah, okay, make so sure you save it. Yeah. Um, now the annoying thing here is I don't think it's going to autocomplete. I think we're going to have to actually like type it in, but that's that okay. Sense. Like it's so not going to retroactively fix it for us. Oh, sorry. I saw that search going here. Uh, I think do you want to go into each. It might be faster just to do it from the tutorial because then we can just click in each of the steps. Okay. Yeah, and this is a great example of where I would like probably like add like a little bit of uniqueness or something like that. What do you mean? Like I would just make sure my slug fields are unique, just so I don't have to worry about like like page overlap or anything like that. Like, yeah, you don't want to have. Uh, so yeah. is so is that a validation that we would edit in the model? Yeah, that's something I would turn on in the model. I would turn it on in the tutorial model and in the steps model. Okay, I see. So slug um, settings would be yeah. Unique and required. Unique and required. Yeah. Okay. I'm zooming around this. You line up. <laughs> hey, it's good. You've learned it. You picked yeah. it up. Yeah. 
Um, okay, and the slug here is validation unique required. Yeah. Save. And then the one other thing that I would do is um, if you go into the reference, if you hit settings on the reference menu for steps, like, uh, yeah, right here. And then you can go to validations and you can make it accept only a certain type. So the bottom one, and I would make it only accept steps there. So you won't even see tutorials there either, which will be really nice. And now we can go back into content, yeah. our tutorial. And I think those, you should be good. I think you did them all already. Yeah, the... yeah. So let's see if those render now. This is so cool. Yeah. And so now it's we've so actually nice. got to do, we're probably going to have to turn the body back into a loop or into a loop. So rather than doing the join, just do another, another loop and. Oh yeah. Sorry. No more, no more join. I love join is like my. <laughs> oh no, we lost Ian again. <laughs> oh man. That's funny. Ian, I feel like Ian, we can't hear you. <laughs> Uh, at least we could see his screen and we, we see he's, he's realized it. So hopefully it'll, it'll just be him refreshing and, and be right back in a second. <laughs> oh man, technical, technical stuff these days. I, I miss working in an office where we had a reliable internet connection. <laughs> hey Ian. I'm back. My, uh, my camera, um, overheated just, just died. Yeah, I, yeah, I was so. just but joking. Got, this got... is this is the kind of stuff that makes me miss uh, working in an office where you had like a reliable internet connection. And yeah. the... <laughs> now we're all at home. It's uh, you know you've got the delivery folks showing up. You've got the internet going. Yeah, out. yeah. The chickens in the in the oven. And... Yeah, it's a good thing. So yesterday, Con Edison, the electric provider for my apartment, they're replacing the meters. They're like modernizing them, and uh, the power went out for five minutes while they switched out the meter for our apartments and. Uh, we had no notice of when it was going to happen. There was just a sign on the door saying it'll happen sometime during the week. And, and of course, uh, it was on stream. No, this luckily I wasn't streaming. That would have been a huge problem if I was streaming. <laughs> but, okay. Um, so the body. We're going to probably is, do each body, and then. Yeah. Hold on. I need to close this out. Um, Command B. There we go. Um, home. Yeah. Because so, was this just. Render steps and now steps, and then home is. I loop. don't think we're using the home file at all. You yeah, we're not just trash that file. Yeah, what is no? But this is something. This is from the examples. Okay, did we not use home file? Okay. Um. Okay, so instead of but I'm just confused because body, how is that working at all in the past? Uh, maybe we were embedding. No, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think body is where it's happening, and we've we've just spread it across two files. Yeah, it's because that's a layout, right? Yeah. And this is yeah, actually yeah. we actually don't yeah, we yeah. actually want body to just be in here. Yeah, I think, and body is not the render is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can probably just. I think this is what we want. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and then I think you can get rid of that first title. Or no, that's right. That's still right. That's, no, still, no, good. Yeah. that's still good. Yeah, yeah, you're good. So let's okay, we screwed something up though. Uh, um, the div eight is probably messed up because you didn't have that. Or no, that's still right. Uh... We're getting the H one, and we're getting the. I think we changed this to steps. Yes. Yeah. 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 The... Dead, yeah. Yeah. So this is now a loop. Each steps, and then I think it's just going to be the. This? This, yeah. And triple? Triple this. Yeah, it's going to be triple because it's HTML. Yeah. There we go. Cool. Um, and then we can just set the class name to, or the class uh, ID to be the slug. Set the class ID to be the slug. Like, okay. You're probably going to want to do the each like one level higher. Yeah. Um, maybe. No, yeah, no, 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 no. Isn't that right. gonna? Cool. No, it's gonna make a new column eight. It's, it's. I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm totally fine. wrong. You just do a, just do a regular div inside the column eight div. Do another div. Okay. Yeah, because the we want the eight grid to stick around. We don't want the we don't want like a billion eight grids. Grids. 
Um, and you might need to return steps at like a higher level because I think steps is just rendered HTML right now. Yes, you're right. So we can close that. Um, steps is the, oh, but yeah. then we want a helper. We don't really want this in, as a helper in handlebar. I mean, it would be cool, but. No, just, we shouldn't pass it. We should do it here. Let's do step uh, equals this. Return step. So we basically are augmenting mm -hmm. this. Yeah. And um, so then we so can do this dot. Be, yeah. Yeah. Let's just call it a HTML. And so this HTML, right? Yep. It looks exactly the same. So that's cool. cool. And then we just yeah. need to set up the title. Is the title slug correct? The href for it? That's what I'm checking right now. So we're going to see. No, I don't think you did. It's just a, it's just a list right now still. OK. Like in the each sidebar, this title, this slug, you got to make it a href. Oh, but this, but, you know, I'm also looking here and seeing oh, right, right. That, um, it's not, uh, there's no ID being rendered here. So slug is wrong or something. Yeah. But you see what I mean? Yeah, no, I do. I do. Yeah. Uh, which I'm kind of confused about. Um, Can we just console log the this dot, the this and double check? I mean, you could probably do it in the in a higher level, bat like up in the main.js. Uh, yeah. Just console log it and make sure we called it the right thing. Yeah. Uh, so just step. console. Uh, you have it called sidebar. Or, oh no, you have it called steps. Yeah, yeah, you're you're good. You're good. Cool. So we've got uh, HTML. Oh, it's fields.slug. Oh, okay, okay. Um, oh, because we've mapped it. So for yeah. the mm -hmm. for this, we are mapping it. Yeah. But we forgot to do that. Here. Yeah, we, so we pulled it up a level. Yeah. This, fields, not files. No, but that's not because that's yeah, that's fine. Uh, also, you spelled fields wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, story of my life. Okay. Um, okay, there we go. So now we have an it. Cool. And that means we can do the href will mm. probably navigate us around, and then we'll just yep. do some jQuery magic to. Yep. Um, I think href will just handle it. Like I think that's that's just built in HTML now. Yeah, but I want to make it. I want to hide and show them. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep you on stream a little longer. Oh right, right. right. <laughs> it's, now we're getting into JavaScript magic, JavaScript and styling magic. Yeah. Uh, it's not gonna be this dot fields dot slug. It's gonna be the because you've already pre done this it. Slug okay, yeah. because it's a yeah. different property. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, and the ref is like that. Yep. Okay. Cool. And those are links now. And yeah, cool. Navigates us. Sweet. Um, do each of our steps have a title? Yeah, we gave they them a do, title. Right? Yeah. So we should we should probably do like actually instead of it. Oh no, that h that div should be like that, but there should be like an h two here. Yeah, I mean, I think you you duplicated it. Like you put you separated the title and you have it in the rich text body. But yeah, you could totally do it as um, now that we're passing the full object, you could do the this yeah. .fields title. And that should work, right? Uh, well, you got to spell title right, but yeah, that should work. I think I, no it fields. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Here we go. Set up yeah. authentication. Yeah. Cool. Um, you could make that like a h like a bigger, like you could actually go into Contemple and you could make those things H3s instead of H2s. And, and so like, but it's, it's not super important. You know, you could start messing around with the styling and stuff. And so should we just do some jQuery magic now? Yeah, let's, let's do it. Uh, I don't know how helpful I'll be on this one, but uh, I can try my best. Um, I mean, it can be really, it can be really simple. Yeah. I am. Uh, jQuery is not my strong suit in the slightest. Uh, uh, I mean, I bet you it's just like inquiry show hide uh, anchor. Yeah. So just, that's probably. Oh, man, I just realized what my package is. I just got the notification from Amazon. You ever like pre-order something six months in advance, a book, and then it, you forget that you did and it shows up and you're delighted? So I have a new <laughs> X-Men to read. Nice. X-Men? Yeah, I got... Um, Volume one of Excalibur, which is like a spinoff of, uh, I think maybe maybe Adrian will 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 be a fan. Um, 
He's Adrian's a big fan of the Flash. If I'm no, sorry, I think I'm mixing Sam. Sam's a big fan of the Flash. Oh, I see. Um, Sam Julian from um, from Alt Zero. Um, um, yeah, it's exciting. Got a new comic book, something to read tonight. So. Nice. That's what my postman brought me. Oh, okay, here we go. Um, we're gonna do it in a. Yeah, walk me through this. What are you What are you doing here? Yeah. So um, the first thing I've done is I've I added a class to each of the steps, and I'm hiding it. Yeah. And so now we have um, that app, but they're hidden. And so now yeah. all we gotta do is show them based on what's being clicked. Yeah. Um, normally, when I would do this, I would use view, and I'd yeah. probably yeah. be looking at the anchor text. Mm -hmm. um, since we're already almost we're already over time by a lot, I'm just going to bind to um, this OL. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I'll probably just do something really simple and say anchor click. Um, we'll keep the functions there. And basically, this is saying this one says hash, and this one says href. I think we want the hash. Did you pull this from Stack Overflow or something? Yeah, I just, I just, I just uh, jacked it off Stack Overflow yeah. for text. Um, let's just see what happens here. I think it, it should just probably alert. Yeah, so it's so giving us that the, um, the, the this dot show or the yeah, and then we can just. Um, we just pop, or that it, it's uh, shift. Is that going to do that? I just want to get the first the first character out of there because it's. No, that didn't work. Um, let's do split. Uh, no, this is too jank. So essentially, what I'm saying is, um, you know, it's giving us the anchor, but we don't want to. We don't want the anchor. We just want the text, right? Yeah. So. Um, We've removed it, and then now we all we need to do is um, identify by the ID. Oh no, we yeah. do want the anchor. I, I, I don't want to do this. Yeah, all we want to do is. Um, it's so funny to me that the anchor and the URL is the same as a CSS <laughs> lookup. You know. Yeah. So we just want to do the. Is that it show. Yeah. Yeah, we got it. Cool. So let's do, um, we're going to make a little function called. Uh, in it that shows the first item. Well, I want to make one, a generic one that's going to hide yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, and also, this can this can be so much simpler, too. This can yeah. just be this. Uh, you got to spell function right as well. You know, you feel like the IDE would like take care of this stuff yeah. or something. But um, yeah, I guess we just haven't come that far yet. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we've hidden them all. Um, let me refresh. Oh, okay. Call hide all. Yeah, you got to call the function. Um, and then we click and they render. And so then can you do also... can you do an array so it's like one to the end rather than everything? Sorry. Like it's right now it's hiding everything. Can you make it start on like one rather than oh, zero? Yeah, yeah. Like, is there steps like? Like is that if that's an array, could you do like I don't know I don't know what what's going on, but um, yeah, what you would what you would do is you would do um, step, and this is going to give you an array of yeah. uh, and then like one to yeah. set like one colon nothing. Yeah, exactly. But there's a, there's a there's a funny thing about jQuery there, where let me get rid of um, this secondary menu, which yeah. I always forget how to do. Uh, okay, well it's gone now. Um, Clear. Okay. Uh, so if we have this and you have um, step, yeah, it gives you an array. But the funny thing is, is that these are actually the DOM nodes, and they're not jQueryified. Yeah. Again. So you've got to then dive into them again. Yeah. So you can do step zero, but you actually have to wrap it again like this. Yeah. And then you can just do show, and yeah. then now we're there. Yeah. So, so you're gonna want to do that on like page load, I guess. Yeah, it is. It's happening on page load exactly. Oh, cool, perfect. So, so I, I think we're. I think we've done it. Yeah, this looks good. We're pretty close. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Um, oh, maybe we should do the tag. We can do like a little tag rendering and just. Yeah, kind of I mean, we would. We would probably actually want to set like a real homepage up and do do like yeah. multiple tutorials at that point, and then like use the description and stuff like that. But um, um, it might be. It might be. We are getting to the two hour mark, and yeah. uh.
I don't want to hold you if you have any other meetings or anything, but I think that we could get that done probably in like 15, 20 minutes. So to do the original, uh, yeah, like the whole card story. thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the cards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would so just would cheat, do... like, copy this tutorial, like just duplicate it in Contentful, and then we have to build out a new page that that's uh, you know that you can click into and then do the slug stuff. I see. So. Uh, okay. You only we only need... have one tutorial, though. Let me see. let me think yeah. about it. Um, I think we can nail that out. I mean, do we have to go into Contentful and edit things? Uh, what do you mean by edit? I mean, I feel like we just need to make one more tutorial with more Yeah, stuff. I would just duplicate this tutorial. Okay. There's like a duplicate function within Contentful, and I would just rename the title and like, we'll know, but uh, like it's good enough for now. Like it's- okay. um, How do I yeah. duplicate it? So just uh, you click the little checkbox on the content page and then duplicate. It's one entry selected, duplicate or unpublish. Uh, Sorry, I don't uh, see the duplicate. Uh, above it, above where you've checked it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, I will change this to the title's a little lower. Uh, you have it underneath the steps. Um, super advanced, deadly <laughs> tutorial. Deadly tutorial. <laughs> and this one's going to be in all of the languages. Yeah. And it's going to have machine learning mobile and all of that. And the difficulty is five. OK. Cool. And okay, okay. So, so I don't know what's going to happen because this is designed for one tutorial, and we're now giving it two tutorials. Well, we were taking the first one, yeah. right? So it just changed into that one mm -hmm. because we um, that was the are, latest published. Thing. Yeah. So I feel like we're going to get into some so, slugs. Why don't we just do that? Yeah, do the slug. Um, get items, and so are we just going to get all of them? Yeah, so let's pull up the um, the query the query documentation in the API reference, and we can query. We should be able to query on add like a field query. Oh, sorry, contentful. contentful. In the API reference, uh, not this one. I think it's the one. If I you just go to a, click on the API reference, you can control F on the page as well. Yeah, so here's where I would do it. And then where we got the like query, the search parameters. Yeah, here we go. And it should it should give us a, if you scroll down, it should give us some examples, the, including one with a. Um, Quality operator? No. Uh, yes, maybe. Let me read it. Equality. Yeah, because you can, you can query it by the properties of it, right? Yeah, so we would we would be looking for fields dot slug as the as the thing. So yeah, we can use this one. So we'd be looking for and rather than sys dot id, we would do fields dot slug is okay. Equal so to... let's see if we can just add fields slug to this get items we already have. Yeah, what was that? And go back to the way we had it, right? Yeah. So is it just this? And that can spell fields, right? Yeah, fields.slug, and then it should be, yeah, colon, and then whatever the slug variable is. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. You might want to make a, a second function, just copy the function and like make a like a get specific item rather than get items. Uh, I get I know that. So we're still using get entries. That. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that in a second. I just want to see if I can get it back to where it was first, yeah. and then we'll copy it over. Sure. Um, um, OK, so we're looking for fields.slug. I need to get the slug out of here. Um, yep, so it's that. We don't want the deadly tutorial. We want the other one. Yeah. Because the deadly tutorial one is now. That's interesting, too. I, I think this is a contentful like thing where like you're um, you're basically saying, like, uh, oh, it's the newest one is, is on top, yeah. right? Whereas in a, a normal database, if you made a new entry, like you wouldn't It'd expect be on the it bottom. to be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you can, I mean, if you want to change that, you can totally change that. There's definitely, so there's an order property to the to the querying and you can order in like inverse publishing or whatever if you need to or alphabetical mm -hmm. or like we're probably going to do alphabetical for when we make the card page. Um, I see, okay, let's see what Are you just hard coding this right now? Cannot get, what's yeah, our I wanted to see if we could get it. Um, this is weird. I'm not really getting an error either. Do 
maybe this is this is this is kind of weird. Um, and if I close this, if I don't have this, this is like one of those like things where a promise yeah. resolve. Yeah. Oh, everything just stopped working. Did I like overdo my API key or something? No, you should be fine. Unless you're going Not crazy, today. you should be fine. Something, something is going crazy. Yeah. App listening. Oh, because of this. Okay. No, right. You changed the you changed yeah. the path. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I just was. I don't want that. Okay, that's a deadly tutorial, and then I should be able to do yeah, fields of slug this, kill yep. the slug again, and copy and paste is my version control. Yep. Okay, there we go. Get cool. <laughs> copy oh. and paste is your version <laughs> control. You should get that on a t-shirt. Yeah. Or a sticker. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're at the job interviews. Yeah. Um, well, th then you should get it on a tie so you can look smart in your job <laughs> interviews. <laughs> okay, so now this. Um, so is there a get entry? Yeah, there is get entry singular. And then that means we wouldn't be mapping. Yeah, we but let's look at doing... get entries and see what the specifics are there. So get entry is. I'm just assuming we can. Oh yeah, we should. You could switch to yeah. It'll just be a singular rather than an array. All the way yeah. here, result is going to be result mm -hmm. and result field. Well, why don't you leave that and just make a new route? Like copy paste this because we're going to have to come back and we're going to edit this route and we're going to want a lot of this stuff when we make the cards. Okay, so you want me to copy paste? Yeah, just make a new a new route and for the slog version and then a you know re redo the function because we're going to want to. And just copy paste the function as well because we're going to want to go back to it when we go into. Okay, so we basically have what we had before up here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here we have get entry, get item. Yeah, and so get item is going to need a slug as a as a parameter. Yes. And the field slug. I don't want to type that out again. Slug. Yeah. And then we'll do app get slug async. Yeah. And this is what I'm saying about like just copy pasting the yeah. normal route is because it's just the same thing. We and we'll go change the normal route. Um we don't need that anymore. And we'll do let result equal await uh, get item singular correct slug. I forget how it express uh Correct params. Is that it? Uh, I have no idea off the top where of my are, head. Where I have are, to are we it. Going express? Yeah, I'd have to Google it. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's uh, params. Yeah, let's see. Params. Okay. Um, okay, so we have this new slug route. We want to give it this um, yeah. input uh, result. And we'll just do. Res send results. Let me just see what happens. I would expect we would get a, a JSON of the. Yeah, of it the should JSON. be a JSON blob. Yeah. Um, 3000. Okay, well. We got an error. Query you want was invalid. Details, errors. Probably filter or ordering specs. So maybe the slug. Uh, go up to your get item. Yeah. Um, do do a do a console log on rec param, param slug and just see what it gives us. Make sure it's the right thing. Let's do. Uh, I'll do it here and see yeah. what's getting put in. Um, Look up getting started with contextual JavaScript. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Invalid. Query. Um, so something I did is I, <clears throat> I just, you know, I just yeah. went right from get entry to get get entries to get entry. Is there anything? Yeah, uh, I would just leave it as get entries for now, just to keep it safe. Or I mean, we we've got, and you could just return the first item if you want to get out of the array mode. Um, get entry doesn't return an array, right? It and, shouldn't. And, it shouldn't. But yeah. it's not working, and 
I, uh, when you query, it's all asset field dot file dot. Uh, sorry, I'm just like reading our search, our search stuff. Um, well, I didn't. I also didn't open up the details errors, which we can do. Yeah, maybe it's uh, the the search param equality op layer. Yeah, all of the examples we have are on plural search entries, not search entry. Um, and search entry is like expecting. I think I think search entry is expecting an ID. Yeah, search entry is is entry singular is expecting an ID to the oh. content. So it, it is entries. We do want entries. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, that makes sense because a search can return multiple. Like who's to yeah. say? Yeah. Um, okay. Let me just undo. I don't. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah, and that should work. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, and then, yeah, we can yeah. just reuse that that uh, render template that we already had for main, and um, in the and it should just work. So you're saying use so this so home. Yeah, by I would by, rename this to like you know tutorial yeah. or something, and and then change the next one for. So this is not tutorial. Yeah, right? just duplicate it. Um. And then we will. Hey, I hate how annoying it is. Like to main dot handlebars or like. Yeah, uh, it was home home dot handlebars. Yeah. And then we'll just take this. Yep. Kind of source. I don't need this anymore. And this is now going to be those cards. So these are. Uh, no, we are going to need that. We are going to need it because it's still going to. We still want the clicking effect, right? No, because the main is this is the cards, right? So we're gonna have. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll come back and we'll delete that later. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, and so this is gonna yeah. be more like a like a list yeah. of columns. Yeah. Let's re like let's refactor the home after we're we're sure that the tutorial is working. We can refactor it in a second. Okay. So you want to do? Um... I want to make sure that the routing works, and then we can we can do the refactoring after we got the okay. routing done. Yeah. So the routing does Which work, is, right? It, well, we haven't checked it. Isn't that this? We, I mean, with a page, like we don't have HTML yet. <laughs> Like we just have a JSON blob. We actually yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah, it's good enough. We're good. I mean, developers—they're smart. They can. I don't know, man. I think it'll take a second to fix it. So just fix it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do you want to do? You want to render? Just it like uh, yeah. Just copy that whole rendering yeah. stuff, and it'll it'll work. You might need the map function still, but the map function. Like I would just uh, copy that whole like like the steps, the sidebar, because we need to format the data to for it to render properly. Like but basically, not, um, no, no, yeah. because we're going to be using. Since we're doing that other page, which doesn't have, yeah, but we for the tutorial page, we want the tutorial page to work like like once you actually click into a thing, like what we built for the home page is now what we actually want for the tutorial page. Okay, I think I think we're we're not synced up. Like I was thinking, we have this one page and it's just a bunch of these, and you click and yeah. they don't have the steps. Yeah, yeah. They don't have. Yeah, I'm saying before we get to that, like click into a tutorial. Yeah. Before we get to this page, I'm just saying we we need to get the tutorial page working first. Oh, oh, because yeah. I've kind of yeah. Because yeah, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna be changing all of the home stuff. Yeah, so like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like since this is already done, like let's just take the work that we've already used, and then we can change the work that we've already done. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of doing both at once. This is yeah. This I'm I'm just saying do one at a time. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. do the thing that's that's yeah. easy, and then yeah. Um, this is why I don't work at big tech companies. That my work. <laughs> My, <laughs> I don't know, man. You're just giving yourself. You're just making it harder on yourself. So, <laughs> okay. So the slug is here, and then yeah. Let me follow this now. So, get items. We wanted to get item instead with the slug, right? Mm -hmm. And that should all work now. Yeah, it theoretically should all work. In theory, when we go to this page, this should now render. Yeah, I think when you refresh it. Moment it of truth. Shy, I'll bet you $5 it doesn't work. All right, I'll take that. I got to Venmo you, I guess. OK, yeah, it didn't work. Oh. Uh, slug is not defined. Um, which slug? Oh, that's because it's rec param slug. Let's do, uh... I don't know, man. That feels like that's on you. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely not contentful. There, there we go. go. Um, yeah. 
Cool. Okay. Cool. Now we can get to the part that I was like, my brain was already two steps ahead. <laughs> so yeah, now we go to the home page, and yeah. um, uh, you're going to want to switch your render. You're rendering the tutorial page right now for your home. Yeah. There we go. And so, we can probably just call this. Yeah. And you're, you're going to want to go back to get items plural. Items. Yeah. Get no. rid of all that junk. And we're going to call this uh, tutorials or something? Uh, yeah, I guess that, that works. Kind of weird. Um, OK, that's something. Uh, I mean, you're not using tutorials. So yeah, it's going to be for each tutorial now. Each tutorial. Probably not in the sidebar. You're probably going to want like a column 12 or something. Um, well, I'm doing cards, so I did column. Four. Oh, right, right. And you do the each higher. That makes sense. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's great. And so do they have going on here? What do you um, body okay. container? OK, 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 OK. They're rendering. We just don't have anything outputting. Cool. I mean, maybe so, the field It's probably this dot fields dot all of yeah. that. F I E L D S. I swear you got you all got to change that. Uh, I can't handle it. Change the spelling of fields to yeah, yeah. melds. Yeah, like like there we go. You know, I'm over the meta the meta <laughs> system. I've changed the word fields. Yeah. Like. And you're gonna want to get rid of the hash as well because right now it's in page linking. The href is going to the wrong place. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So we will actually want to do this. Yeah. And now we have. Woo! Oh, it works. Cool. Yeah. So okay. We got routing setup, which that that was much faster. That took us like five minutes. So uh, let me take a look at the comments and see what we got in the comments. Uh, hey, friends, just came back. Uh, what's going on? <laughs> so uh, uh, we just uh, took. We have a content model in Contentful of some tutorials. Uh, we had a single tutorial showing uh, on our homepage, and we've gone ahead and we've added a second tutorial. And now we've uh, we've set up routing, so you can click into the tutorials and you can see stuff. Uh, we also set up some cool jQuery so you can like click through the tutorials and like see just the specific steps that you're looking for. Uh, and I think Ian is going to be sending us an invoice for rewriting our developer tutorials uh, in <laughs> in an hour or two, but because <laughs> we've been stealing the tutorials from the contentful documentation uh, as well. Um, so right now, what I'm doing is um, so we've. Now we're styling uh, we've it. Established yeah. and we've got the variables. It's, yeah. it's easy to go from here because we can just start accessing the fields. Yep. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to make a little loop that renders the categories yep. um, in a nice bootstrap way. Yeah. So we have uh, a badge, and we can just call it um, this fields. I guess it would be categories, right? And that's going to be a list. So I would assume we can loop through it. Yeah. Yeah, we should be able to do that. And so instead, um, I just don't know if that should be a paragraph or not. But instead, we're going to probably do this fields uh, categories categories and then each category uh, and you're going to want to you have it inside the p tag and the p tag closing in your each loop yes that's not valid okay and then this is going to be a category or it should just be this like just be that's right yeah, yeah. Okay. work but what did we get Uh, body um, row call for p. It's, it's an empty p tag. Is it? Oh, it is an empty p tag. Okay, so uh, it might not be category. category. It's this dot fields dot. Uh, maybe it's category singular. We can we can uh, if we uh, console log the the JSON yeah. blob, we can double check it. If you do it in the uh, main dot js, just make sure we we labeled it correctly. Yeah, just console log results one or something. There's a results error. Uh, category singular. Category, yeah. Yeah, yeah OK. Uh, home. Hey. Mark is saying that we should use uh, Gatsby or Next on the front end. <laughs> and I don't disagree with you, Mark, at all. But I think we're trying to just be fast on this one. So this is so definitely not. I was confused at why you would use Gatsby or Next or something to, yeah. to do it. Because they have their own management system. Which, like The whole point of those tools is to yeah. use developer workflows, right? Yeah, there's a lot of, I think, I mean, Gatsby is a static site 
uh, generator. So you get all that like static site management. Um, I think for us, like since we're just doing this on a live stream, we're like more looking to ex showcase like the contentful concepts and and the yeah. for it's it's just like a speed thing. Like this is a live stream. We're not like putting putting it out on like a production server or anything like that. Mark is saying that handlebars is a bit dated, and I don't disagree with you. But again, we're kind of just trying to be. Yeah, uh, yeah, like we're going the, for like, how can we get this done in an hour or two yeah. versus like doing it the right way with caching <laughs> and yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark is actually saying Gatsby for CDN and Mark, I disagree with you pretty strongly there. I think you could use, uh, uh, you could use, I mean, yes, you would put a CDN on the actual page, but like we're caching the content on the contentful CDN. And so, um, like the content return is actually pretty fast. Um, like we're we're rendering the content live on the page, but the content is is cached already, so we're getting it really quickly too. I will also jump in and say that dated is not bad. Yeah, dated is proven. It's right? battle dated tested. Is, sorry, yeah, it's it's stable, right? And so I I'm always trying to use things that are old because it's mm -hmm. you you can find the docs right, yeah. and it's like. It's it, people have written these secondary articles about using this tag with this other tag, and and think, yeah, and the bugs have been worked out. So, or at least there are a lot of stock overflow answers to yeah. what, how do you deal with the bugs if they haven't been yeah, fixed. Yeah. Um. Right. Anyway, not to get into into, <laughs> into uh, yeah to philosophy here, but Mark disagrees pretty strongly. So he does. <laughs> yeah, just got a one word disagree from Mark. Disagree. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, are we done? I think we're done. I mean, maybe we could do like a like the rating, like the stars. Oh yeah, the star rating. And you could so do the language. I think I think the language you could do pretty quickly with just a copy paste. I mean, look, we're using Bootstrap. Of course, this is dated. Like, <laughs> um, a star. Yeah, like fun awesome rating. star or something. Star ratings. I think we should have Font Awesome built in. Oh yeah, uh, I don't think we get Font Awesome, do we? I think Boots doesn't Bootstrap come with it by default, or maybe not anymore. It used to. I thought it was just like extremely compatible, but not built in. Yeah. Um, okay, so you want to do Font Awesome CDN? Oh no, I want this link. Yeah. Disagree in one word. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, okay, that, that should have given us font awesome. Let's see. Uh, and I can check it through the network tab. That's not it. Oh, Mark is saying that we should use Former 36. I do agree with Mark on Former 36. Former 36 is the built-in or the contentful styling tool uh, oh, or documentation. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so right. we could we could actually make this website look like contentful, but uh, I don't think Former 36 comes with any grid stuff. That's okay. We don't have much. Yeah. Um, like, I, I don't think this comes with stars or icons or anything. I think Mark is just saying, rather than using Bootstrap, we should have used the this because it's our component library. Yeah, I'm wondering, do you have like a... a uh, Honestly, a the rating? rating is probably in here because the rating yeah, that we yeah. get from built-in and contentful is getting pulled from here. You don't have, that, that's something that you should have that you don't have. Yeah, like. I don't know where it's where it's being pulled from, but it should be in the components. Um, Pill radio select spinner skeleton switch table tab tabs tag. Yeah. Tip. I don't know. We're we're like a, uh, we're already like pretty pretty over time. We're a full hour longer than than we we planned. Yeah, for. yeah. And Do so, you want to call it here? Yeah, I think probably it'd be best to best to call it. For, should we keep arguing for... about the best way to have? <laughs> <laughs> I think we should probably call it. Um, and uh, I think my roommate is probably getting to the point where he needs to start taking calls for the day as well. And we uh, we're both on desktops right now, so it's always a constant fight over who gets to <laughs> who gets to take uh, calls. Yeah. We have to we have to schedule over each other, and uh, uh, so we should probably jump off um, as well. Before I let you go, Ian, though, is there is there anything anywhere people can find you if you want to share your like Twitter or like your the Hacksaw website or anything yeah, like that? Yeah. So um, I'm the founder of a company called Hacksaw, and what we do is test developer experience, um, just like usability testing. So all we're doing is applying the concepts of user experience research yeah. and user testing to developer docs. Yeah. 
And that's why we went and built this little portal today because again, we're seeing a lot of people building these sort of things. So it's, mm. it's kind of fun just to jump in and you know see what it's like to do it. Yeah. And you can find me on Twitter. I am Twitter uh, Ian Jennings, but there are no vowels in the Jennings part. It's just yeah. uh, J N N N G S. Yeah. Cool. Um, All yeah, right. You yeah, me. and just for me, just a reminder that we'll be back next week with uh, another stream on Tuesday, uh, and that we're doing a community hangout on the 16th. So keep an eye out for that. We're really excited for it. We've got two awesome speakers lined up. We're looking for two more speakers. If you're interested in speaking at one of our community hangouts, um, either in North America or Europe, we'd love to, we'd love to have you feel free to reach out to us on the contentful Slack, uh, which you can get to from contentful.com slash developers or contentful.com slash Slack. Uh, that's it for me. And we will be back next week. Uh, and we'll see you all then. Thanks Ian for, for joining me for two hours. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, you um, got it. I'm glad we got it done. Yeah, toss that up on GitHub for us so we can so we can keep going on it. <laughs> Alrighty.